I sent you to life in confinement without parole? That's f***ing horse shit. You do whatever the f*** you want, Why are they shutting my mic off? On the federal witness of the United States federal government, I demand some goddamn respect, you All I did was truck pass on property. Ma'am, you gotta create the community that you want to live in. Bond Court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free, then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Afternoon, everybody. This is Judge Arendis. I will be handling initial appearances today. When I call your name, you're going to come up to the microphone. I'm going to ask you to state your name and date of birth to make sure I have the correct person in front of me. I will let you know what charges you have been picked up, if there's a bond, what that bond will be, and the conditions of that bond. If you need the services of the public defender, I will provisionally appoint them for today and for today only. If you do need their services, you will need to complete an application, have it reviewed by the clerk, to make sure that you qualify. We can have appearances for the record, starting with the state. Patricia Lewis on behalf of the state. Danielle Pinnell on behalf of the state. Pre-trial release. John Clem Marino. Thank you, and for defense. John Mancini on behalf of the Public Defender's Office. Thank you. Mr. Mancini, we are going to take one out of order because we have a um, state attorney that needs to get to another courtroom. Yes, Your Honor. It's going to be Brooke Hancock. She is present and approaching, Your Honor. Thank you. I also believe she has retained private counsel, Your Honor. That is correct. Um, Tracy Kagan did file a notice of appearance. Thank you, Ms. Pinnell. Good afternoon, ma'am. State your name and date of birth, please. Brooke Hancock, 1204-93. Thank you. State, did you wish to be heard on this matter? Your Honor, the state would request that this defendant remain on no bond at this time pursuant to Troutman v. Jr., Supreme Court, 1911-82. All right. I had intended on doing such. Ma'am, you've been picked up as a result of an arrest warrant that was issued for murder. The court found probable cause when they issued that warrant. I have read it, and I do concur with that finding. Your bond will remain at zero. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right, now we're going to start with our um, Spanish cases, Counsel. Yes, Your Honor. We only have one. I've identified only one individual today, Your Honor. Is that Mendoza Rodriguez? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Hello, Cisco Unity Connection Messaging Hello. System. They shouldn't have taken them already. The clock on this is incorrect. What did it say? It's wrong. Hello, Cisco Unity Connection Messaging. Council, we're going to have to call them back. If we can just have him take a seat, we'll recall it. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Marvin Courtway. I'm sorry, Your Honor. We had some noise. Could you repeat that name? Marvin Courtway. Um, I believe he has refused today, Your Honor. All right. Well, I will go ahead and waive his appearance. Don't get to refuse to come to court. He's been picked up on an Orange County warrant under 2022 CF 504. There's no bond on that. Thank you. John Robles Melendez. Present and approaching, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. John Robles, 041788. Thank you. Sir, you've been picked up as a result of a warrant out of Hillsborough County. There are two counts on that, a reckless driving and a no valid driver's license. There's no bond set on either of those counts. They'll be notified that you're here and ready for pickup. Thank you. Sure. Brian Javier Ferrado Rosa. Violent felon of special concern. 
Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. Ryan Rosa, 2794. Thank you. Sir, you've been picked up as a result of a violation of probation and 20 CF 2592. There's no bond on that, sir. Thank you. Jason Ray Hartley. All right, well, he's been picked up as a result of a warrant for failure to appear in 2022 CF75. Count one was set at $1,500. Count two was set in the amount of $500. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thanks. Benny Lason. Uh, President of Birching and Your Honor, defense would have a probable cause argument. Um, I received the paperwork that you provided to the judge who was supposed to be hearing these matters. Yes, Your Honor. Is that what it's relating to? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I believe we have a case of mistaken identity in front of us. All right. Well, any identity question will have to be handled in an evidentiary hearing. Um, yes, Your Honor. All right. Sir, state your name and date of birth as you appear before me today. Benny Lason Pizarro. Thank you. So, sir, you've been picked up as a result of a warrant that was issued for violation of probation. Uh, there is no bond on that. As you heard the attorney say, they are um, contesting your identity. Um, the way that the email reads is that there was an issue possibly with your brother. That case has been let go, but somehow you've been picked up. But it, uh, hold, 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 hold on. Do not say anything. Everything you say can and will be used against you. You are being recorded. Sorry about that. Thank you. An evidentiary hearing will have to be held. The attorneys will file a motion and have that set with the trial judge. Honor, Thank you. If I may, would you consider um, possibly setting bond in this case? No, sir. Your Honor. Thank you. Were you two here on that case? Okay. It's finished. Thank you. Mr. Lyson, you can speak with the uh, state attorney's office if there's something that you would like to offer them to help your brother out in this situation, okay? All right, thank you. Devin Mullen. President of Birching, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. Devon Mullen, 2696. Thank you. Mr. Mullen, you've been picked up as a result of an arrest warrant that was issued. There are four charges on it. The first is robbery by sudden snatching. The second is grand theft auto. The third is false imprisonment, and the fourth is a battery. Probable cause was found when the warrant was issued, but I have reviewed it and I concur with the finding. Bond will be set on count one in the amount of $3,500. Count two, the amount of $2,500. Count three, the amount of $500. And count four, the amount of $1,000. You're not to have any contact with Kenneth Shaw, and you're not to return to the scene. Thank you. George Nielsen. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. George Nielsen, 5174. Thank you. Mr. Nielsen, you've been picked up as a result of an arrest warrant for providing false registration information. Probable cause was determined when that warrant was issued. I have reviewed it. I do concur with the finding. You know what you're supposed to do for registration? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it was a yes or no question. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what you're supposed to do? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, make sure you get it done. Comply with the requirements. You'll be released on pretrial release. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Robert Salinas. He is pre uh, uh, present, Your Honor. He's in the cage. It'll be a moment before he's brought forward. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. Paul Robert Salinas, 72966. Thank you. Mr. Salinas, you've been picked up as a result of a bench warrant that was issued for failure to appear at pretrial. There's no bond on that, sir. Thank you. Leon Betancourt. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. Uh, Leon Betancourt, 1103-1991. Thank you. Mr. Betancourt, you've been picked up on two charges. 
The first is fleeing and looting with lights and sirens activated. Court has reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. Bond to be set in the amount of $3,500. You've also been picked up as a result of driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Court has reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find that there is sufficient probable cause. Bond to be set in the amount of $500. You are not to have any alcohol or drugs, and you're not to drive without a valid license. Being that you refuse to provide the um, breath sample, your license is automatically suspended unless you were to get it uh, put back into place through the DMV, okay? Thank you. Am I eligible for PTR, ma'am? No, sir, you're not. Thank you. James McKinney? Uh, your Honor, I've also been informed that he refused today. All right. Well, you know my position on that, counsel. Yes, we will be waiving his appearance. He's been picked up as a result of possession of methamphetamine as well as possession or use of drug paraphernalia. Court has reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find there's sufficient probable cause. Bond will be set on count one in the amount of $2,500. Count two, the amount of $500. He's not to have any alcohol or drugs. Thank you. Eric Medina. Thank you. Eric Medina, 03031983. Thank you. Mr. Medina, you've been picked up as a result of disorderly conduct, disorderly intoxication, and possession or use of drug paraphernalia. The court has reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. It appears that you qualify for direct pretrial release, so the court will grant that as to each of these counts. I do want to tell you that you are not to return to the Wawa, okay? Thank you. Lindsay Page. She's present in approaching room. Thank you. Lindsay Page, May 24th, 1985. Thank you. Ms. Page, you've been picked up as a result of possession of controlled substance without a prescription, as well as possession or use of drug paraphernalia. Court has reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find there's sufficient probable cause. It appears that you qualify for direct, direct pretrial release, so the court will grant that as to both of these charges, with the condition of no alcohol and no drugs, and you are to submit to random urinalysis, okay? Yes. Thank you. For both. For both. Nathaniel Reed. Your Honor, um, uh, we were requesting a reset. He had a mental health crisis earlier and is currently um, unable to attend. It's not a willful refusal. All right, then he'll be reset for when he is available. Thank you, Your Honor. If you can make sure that um, whenever he's made available that they get that updated sheet, please. Grenial Smith. Present and approaching, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. Cornelio Smith, 12-20-1982. Thank you. Mr. Smith, you've been picked up as a result of possession of cocaine and possession or use of drug paraphernalia. The court has reviewed the charging affidavit. I do find that there's sufficient probable cause. You do not qualify for pretrial release. Bond to be set on count one in the amount of $1,500. Count two, the amount of $500. You're not to possess or consume any alcohol or drugs. Do you understand? Thank you. Council, I believe that's everybody. Did you have? Oh, wait, I've got the Spanish one. That's right. All right, let's see if we can get that. Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is Laura Royo, State Certified Interpreter and previously sworn. Good afternoon, Ms. Aurora. This is Judge Arendis. I am in 4E for initial appearances, so we will be piping it through the courtroom. I have a case for you. It's 22CT1458 and 22CT1459. Ronaldo Mendoza Rodriguez. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. State your name and date of birth, please. Buenas tardes, señor. Por favor, indique su nombre y fecha de nacimiento. Reynaldo Mendoza, 052069. Reynaldo Mendoza, 052069. Thank you. Sir, you've been picked up as a result of driving while under the influence of alcohol or drugs and a no valid, no valid driver's license. 
Señor, usted fue detenido por conducir bajo los efectos de alcohol y de drogas y por conducir sin ser titular de una licencia válida. Y se ha estudiado en este juzgado el, el documento acusatorio determinando que existe suficiente fundamento fáctico para sustentar ambas acusaciones. Con respecto al primer cargo, se fijará la fianza en $2,500. Con respecto al segundo, $500. Prohibido el consumo, tenencia de alcohol o drogas. And you are not to drive a valid y prohibido poder conducir sin tener usted una licencia válida. Y aparte, el personal de la libertad provisional ha notado que tiene una retención por inmigración. Thank you, sir. Gracias, señor. Does that take care of it, counsel? All right, thank you. Have a good afternoon. You too. Bond Court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free, then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. 2022. Council, if you could put your appearance on record. Brenda Eugene, on behalf of the State Attorney's Office. Leticia George, on behalf of the Office of the Public Defender. Okay. Let's see if I can get an interpreter. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Rafael Barrera, State Certified Court Interpreter. I have been previously sworn. Uh, good morning. If you could please connect to the headset. Certainly, Your Honor. Yeah. Your Honor, the interpreter can confirm the defendant is able to hear through the headsets. Good morning, sir. Please tell me your name. Hugo Elias Gomez. Hugo Elias Gomez. Hugo Elias Gomez. You're here in 22 CF 5223, charged with false imprisonment, domestic violence, and battery domestic violence. There is probable cause here. As a matter of fact, there's probable cause for a much more serious crime than for what you were arrested. Sir, do you wish to have an attorney represent you? Yes. Based on the affidavit, he does qualify for the assistance of the public defender. Ms. George, I'll appoint your office to represent him. Did you wish to be heard on anything? Um, only bond, Your Honor. I'd ask that you take into consideration he has no criminal history. Um, and also, he's been in the area for over a year. So I'd ask that you consider that when setting the bond amount in this case. All right. Does the state wish to be heard on bond? Thank you, Your Honor. All right, sir, at this time, your bond on count one will be $25,000. Count two will be $5,000. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim or any witness in this case. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, I have the sheet. You cannot have any contact with any minor child under the age of 18. You must comply with any plan set in place by DCF. You cannot possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You must maintain a separate residence, and I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Yes. Good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. Your 
Your Honor, the interpreter can confirm defendant is able to hear through the headsets. All right. Good morning, sir. Please tell me your name. Alberto Monzón Martínez. Alberto Monzón Martínez. Alberto Monzón Martínez. 22 CF 5225. You're here charged with aggravated assault, domestic violence. Based on the affidavit, I will appoint your office, Ms. George, to represent him. There is probable cause. Does either side wish to be heard on bond? Only that he has, um, although he has an arrest, Your Honor, he has no convictions and no other criminal history that I can see. No. Nothing from the state. No. All right. Thank you both. At this time, sir. Your bond is $10,000 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim or any witness in this case. Do you understand what no contact means? Mm -hmm. One of the interpreter has not uh, heard a, a response from the defendant. He was signing. I know. Sir, do you understand what no contact means? Yeah. Yes. You cannot possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Okay. Okay. Good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. Your Honor, the interpreter can confirm defendant is able to hear through the headsets. Thank you. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Javier Rodriguez Barrios. Javier Rodriguez Barrios. You're here in 22 CF 5263, charged with aggravated battery on a pregnant person. Based on the affidavit, I'll appoint your office to represent him, Ms. George. Did you wish to be heard on anything? I can't hear that. I didn't understand. I'm asking your attorney. Just a second, because it wasn't in my. Um, I don't know why it's not in my third. It says in the affidavit she's five to six weeks pregnant. He's the father, and he knows that she's pregnant. Oh, no, then. So I, I believe there's probable cause, but I wanted to. Yep. No. All right. There is probable cause. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right, sir. Your bond is $5,000 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. I will order you must maintain a separate residence, and I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Good luck, sir, and stay in touch with your attorney. Okay. All right, that's all we have for the Spanish. Oh, actually, sir, could you make an announcement out loud to the gallery and see if there's anyone, any witnesses that need your assistance? Of course, Your Honor. Su atención, por favor, si hay alguna persona presente que necesite los servicios del intérprete en el público, por favor, alce la mano en este momento. I see no response. Have a good morning, Your Honor. Thank you as well. Please tell me your name. My name is Ross Carlson. You're here in 22 CF 5243. Because a warrant was issued for your arrest, charging you with aggravated stalking after a court order and aggravated stalking after an injunction. Another judge has already found probable cause in this case. I'll appoint an attorney to represent you. Yeah. Sir, while you're in the courtroom, I need you to look at me or that wall. Don't look at any witness. Do you understand? Thank you. 
Good morning, ma'am. Did you wish to testify this morning? Um, yeah. Okay, then I need you to raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you die? Please state your name for the record. Sierra Huddleston. All right, let me ask if the prosecutor has some questions for you, ma'am. Just a moment. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. You currently have an injunction against the defendant? Yes, ma'am. How long has that been in place? Um, a month and a few days. If you are, if you know, has he been served with that injunction? Yes, ma'am, uh, both temporary and permanent. Okay. I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. All right, any questions from the defense? No, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, is there anything else you want to tell me this morning? Um, we have a, a the injunction, the civil injunction, and then um, in the... Um, in the battery of, that he was already here for, um, the other judge um, issued a no contact order as well um, for me and my mother and my, our five-year-old daughter as well as my father. Um, so I, it's my understanding that they're, they're separate, the no contact order and injunction. They are. I just wanted to understand. Yes, so it's, it's two separate cases, you're correct. So there are two different court orders, but it sounds like they both say the same thing, that he's not allowed to have contact with you. Yeah. All right, is there anything else you want me to know? No, ma'am. No, ma All right, thank you, ma'am. You can stay right there while I finish, or you can go if you want, it's up to you. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. George. Yes, Your Honor. Based on the charges, I read the affidavit for this warrant. Obviously, the warrant was signed by another judge, so it's already the probable cause was already found. But based on the facts alleged and the fact that he's out on bond for a battery, I'm struggling to find any terms, any bond conditions this court can place on your client with which he'll comply. So at this point, I'm inclined to hold him at no bond. He's demonstrated over and over that he is not going to comply with court orders. Your, is there anything you can tell me? I'll give you a moment to discuss with him if, if you need something. Can we approach, Your Honor? Yes. One moment. All right. Your Honor, I would just argue that all the, um, I know he has the battery, um, but other than that, he has no other violent criminal history. Um, so I'd ask that you set a bond. Um, I believe they were text messages. I would also point to the fact that in the affidavit, the warrant, it did not appear there was any violence. Um, or threats of violence mentioned in the text messages. So I'd ask that you consider that also and set a bond on that case. And if you just if you are inclined that no bond. Thank you, counselor. There there is not an allegation of violence in the affidavit.
However, Mr. Carlson, I need to make sure that you understand everything I'm saying this morning. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Do uh, you understand what I'm saying? It, in my own words, I, I feel like just silence permanently under all conditions. I don't need to talk to my, I, it's just. Do not send a text message. Do not send a message through friends or family. Do not call on the phone. Do not contact any of these people on social media. You cannot be within a thousand feet of the victim or the victim's family or her place of employment or your daughter's school. Do you understand that? That's, that's the, the thing, it, like just my daughter, right? I, I no, not right now. You can't be within a thousand feet of her school. Do you understand that? Is there anything about my order to you that you don't understand? Essentially, no, no contact to anyone, period. Right. Outside of my mother, maybe. Outside of what? Family. Well, this is a, is, I apologize, just no contact to anyone, period. No, that's correct. Any of these named individuals, you can have no contact in any way. You cannot send a message through friends or family, so don't contact other family members and tell them to contact her. Do you understand that? You have to answer out loud. Yes, ma'am, until I'm told otherwise by a judge. By a judge. Yourself, right? yes, that's correct. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set your bond at $100,000 on count one, $100,000 on count two, with those conditions, no contact with any victim or witness in this case. You cannot possess a weapon, firearm, or ammunition. You cannot be within 1,000 feet of the victim's residence or place of employment or your daughter's school. And at this time, I'm revoking your bond in 22MM1828 AO. Even while in custody, you can have no contact with the victim. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you for coming, ma'am. Good luck. Good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. Yes. Correct. Thank you. And you did. You're here in 22 CF 4824 because a warrant was issued for your arrest charging you with domestic battery by strangulation, domestic battery, false imprisonment, domestic violence, robbery by sudden snatching, criminal mischief, damage greater than $1,000, and abuse of an elderly or disabled adult. Another judge has already found probable cause in this case. Does he qualify? I'm going, oh, I, it actually says he has a public defender. Ms. George, it says your office already represents him. On the out on bond. Oh, you did? Oh. Oh. Thank you. So your office already represents him. Mm -hmm. um, your Honor, um, the only argument that I would have is for his out on bond. Um, I believe it occurred uh, back in December of last year. He was arrested February 17th of this year, and to date, uh, no information has been filed. So I just ask that you consider that and not revoke his out on bond. Uh, does the state wish to be heard? That timeline is correct, Your Honor. However, I will also note um, what happened in this case along with the victim in the case from December is someone different. It's a different victim. So I would bear that in mind, Your Honor. All right, here's what I'm going to do. In this case, your bond on count one will be $50,000, count two will be 500, count three will be 5,000, count four, 5,000, count five, 1,000, and count six, 5,000. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim or any witness in this case. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. Were you two living together? Yes. You cannot now. I'll order you must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. There was a child. Isn't there a child in this case? I think so. 
Hold on a minute. I think there was, but I don't know if she was there. Uh, you can't possess or consume alcoholic beverages. You'll be subject to random alcohol screens. You can't have any contact with any minor child under the age of 18. And at this time, I'm revoking your bond in 21 CF 15544. Good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. just alcohol. Charles Knight. Good morning, Mr. Knight. You're here in 22 CF 5267, charged with domestic battery by strangulation and battery domestic violence. There is probable cause. Does he call him? Hold on one moment. He did. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Good morning, ma'am. Did you want to testify this morning? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm his wife. Okay, raise your right hand, please. Tell me swear in affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, so I help you guys. Yes. Thank you. Let me ask the prosecutor if she has some questions for you. Yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Can you state your name for the record? Spell your last name. Angela Forrester, F-O-R-S-T-E-R. -E and how do you know the defendant? We're married. Do you live together? Yes. While this case is pending, do you want to continue living together? Yes. Has something like this happened before? No, this is just a misunderstanding, and um, I'm not in, afraid of him or anything. Okay. Um, were drugs or alcohol involved in this incident? No. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Any questions from the defense? No questions, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, is there anything else you want to tell me this morning? Um, I, 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 I'm not sure, like, what, what uh, I just that. Um, you know, it was a misunderstanding. I'm not. I'm not afraid. I would like for him to come home if that's possible. Um, you know, we're on the verge of um, possibly losing our property to delinquent taxes and different things. And um, you know, I, I could really. And plus, I got health problems, so I wish that he would be released uh, to come home. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate that. However. Based on the facts that are contained in the affidavit at this time, I'm not going to allow him to have any contact with you. I think sometimes in situations like this, it's good for everybody to have some time to breathe. So at this time, sir, your bond is $5,000 on count one, $100 on count two. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. I will order you maintain a separate residence and I will allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your, look at me, don't look at her. Thank you. You'll have a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, I need you to stay in touch with your attorney. Good luck, sir. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Good luck. That's it? Ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. All right, good luck, ma'am. Sir? Um, I'm sorry, Your Honor. What was, um, I missed the bond. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, is this from you? Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. That's for me. All right. Okay. Or I'm going to hand it to you at the wrong time. All right. Good luck, sir. Um, Thank you. Good morning. Please tell me your name. Vanessa. Vanessa Leach. All right. Ms. Leach, you're here in 22 CF 5274, charged with aggravated child abuse, neglect of a child, and domestic battery by strangulation. I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you based on her affidavit. She qualifies. Okay. Did you wish to be heard, counselor? Thank you. I'm, I'm oh, asking yeah. your attorney. Okay. I know. Um, Your Honor, I just point to the fact that I don't know if this is correct, but our minds is showing no criminal history. Um, so I just ask that you consider that one set in her bond amount in this case. All right, does the state wish to be heard? No, Your Honor.
I think I only have the birth date for one of the children. Do you know the others by chance? I don't see it, but I might, you might have more information than I do. Uh, which date do you have, Your Honor? 2003, uh, hold on. 2013. 2013. Okay, there's a 2009 and there's a 2007. Thank you. Was there anything else from the state? I'm sorry? Was there anything else from the state? Oh, no, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought I was waiting on you. Oh, no. My All right. <laughs> All right. At this time, ma'am, your bond on count one is $10,000. Count two is 1000 Count three is 5000 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victims and witnesses in this case. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. You can't have contact with any other minor child under the age of 18. You must comply with any plan set in place by DCF. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. Did you two read this affidavit? I'm not sure what to do about the one-time return. She doesn't reside there. She was just visiting there, Your Honor. It says they live in a car. Right. She says she goes there after work just to pick up the kids, but she doesn't physically live at the address. But car. The kids said they live in a car. So I can't. He said. She's, she's saying they live in different hotels, um, but she just moved into a different, moved into a place. Okay, because you can't, you can't reside in the same location as your children right now. Do you understand that? She's saying DCF wasn't involved. It's DS, DCF was involved. Yeah. Danielle from DCF was involved. Your Honor, you're ordering a no contact with all the children, correct? I am. <clears throat> Call the number on that paper. Your attorney can file a motion in front of your trial judge. Okay, thank you. Good luck, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Please tell me your name. Judy. Full name. Judy Petit Fuer. All right, ma'am, you're here in... 22 CF 5276, charged with battery on a person 65 years of age or older and battery domestic violence. Ma'am, you didn't complete an affidavit of indigency. Do you wish to have an attorney represent you? We were supposedly supposed to um, get a lawyer. One of my family members was bringing one here. All right, so they're going to hire an attorney for you? Yeah, so I'm not sure if they're here right now. Okay, well, I don't see anyone coming in, so right now you don't have an attorney. There is probable cause for the charges against you. I reviewed the affidavit. 
Uh, does the state wish to be heard on bond? There you are. All right, at this time, your bond is $5,000 on count one, 100 on two, count two. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim or any witness in this case. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. You can't possess a weapon, firearm, or ammunition. Were you living in this location? Yes, ma'am. All right, you cannot now. I'll order you to maintain a separate residence and allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. As long as the family member is not a victim or a witness in this case, if I were you, I would contact them right away because you don't have an attorney representing you right now. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Is it possible that I can? I'm sorry? Is it possible that I can contact them? Yes, you, you have access to phones here. Not from the courtroom, but you can call them. All right, thank you. All right, good luck, ma'am. Good morning, 22 CF 5270. You're here charged with aggravated battery with a weapon, domestic violence. It says, PD. all right, Mr. George, based on the affidavit, she qualifies. I'll appoint your office. Do you wish to be heard on anything? Um, <clears throat> your Honor, I just um, ask that when you consider the facts in this case, it appears it was um, between siblings. Um, Additionally, she has no criminal history, um, so I'd ask that you consider that when setting the bond amount in this case. All right. Does the state wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. I do see that. And um, Your Honor, I would just ask for the one-time return. She has moved, but she needs a one-time return. She found another place to live. All right. Here's what I'll do. Based on the facts in the affidavit and your arguments, I'll set your bond at $2,000 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim. I'll order you to maintain a separate residence, which you're already doing. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. You can't possess a weapon, firearm, or ammunition, and you'll be subject to random drug screens while you're out on bond. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you. Siana, can, I, can she have a just a 30-day grace period for the uh, mini -mer? Yes, because it's you. cannabis. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Take this. Take this. Hello, Good morning. You're here in two cases. 21 MM 6530. A capius was issued for your arrest for failing to appear on a charge of battery. The judge authorized a $5,000 bond with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim in that case. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. And then in 22MM3085, you're here charged with providing false information to law enforcement and resisting an officer without violence. Does she qualify? All right, I'll appoint the public defender in both of these cases. There is probable cause. I'll set your bond at $500 on count one, $100 on count two. Are there any conditions the state would request in this? No, Your Honor. Case based on the facts. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Eric Ford. Good morning. You're here in 22MM3087, charged with battery, domestic violence. Does she qualify? All right, ma'am. Do you wish to have an attorney represent you? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry? Yes. All right. It doesn't look like, based on your affidavit, that you qualify for the appointment of the public defender, so you're going to have to hire an attorney. I reviewed the affidavit this morning. There is probable cause. Does the state wish to be heard on bond? No, Your Honor. I see that she has no criminal history. All right, at this time, ma'am, your bond is $500 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Can you please um, go over that? Yes. 
You cannot contact the victim via phone, text message, social media. You cannot send a message through friends or family. You cannot follow them, see them in person, no contact at all. Do you understand? Yes. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. I'm ordering that you must maintain a separate residence and I'll allow one time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Yes. All right, good luck, ma'am. And this night. Good morning. You're here in 22 MM 171 because a warrant was issued for your arrest, charging you with battery, domestic violence, and criminal mischief, damage greater than $200. Another judge has already found probable cause in this case. Ma'am, based on your affidavit, you do not qualify for the appointment of the public defender, so you're going, going to need to try and hire an attorney. Do you understand that? Uh, okay. Your bond will be $500 on count one, $500 on count two. With special conditions, Honor. you can have no contact. Honor. Oh, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> While you're in here, I need you to look at me or that wall. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right, good morning. Do you wish to testify? Yes, please. All right, raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? <laughs> yes. Please state your name for the record. Austin Neek. All right, let me see if the state has some questions for you. Good morning, sir. How do you know the defendant? Uh, she's my fiance and the mother of my child. Has something like this happened before? Not, this is a, like it's a big misunderstanding. We were outside um, washing our cars just because there's no sunlight. And the window of my car, we were using the water hose to like stretch it to reach the top. The water hose like the tip of it hit the window and shattered. Um, other than that, I don't know where the whole domestic thing even came from. Besides a neighbor called, I guess the cops. I guess we were being loud while we were washing the car. I don't know. Uh, the window, you know, did get fixed. But this whole domestic thing, I, I don't even know where it came from. Like, I don't know why they picked her up or anything. Okay. Um, just a few more questions. Do you live together now? Yes. While this case is pending, would you like to continue living together? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Sir, is there anything else you want to tell me this morning? Um, just that, you know, as long as I would like to have contact with her, um, I don't know where the whole domestic thing came from besides the cops that came and said that a neighbor called. Um, other than that, you know, we weren't fighting or another, we were washing our cars. So the affidavit for the warrant says that officers responded to a disturbance. The officer saw a female running with a small child and a male following behind them. The officers recognized the couple because they've been to your residence many times for domestic disturbances. And as they talk to both of you, what they said is that you said you were at the residence, she was yelling at you, that she grabbed you and pulled you. Yes. She... I never gave. Hold on. I'm telling you what it says. I'm sorry. Let me finish. She dumped a soda in your car, that she busted the window of your car. And that's the domestic battery and that's the criminal mischief. So those are the allegations that led to the charges, sir. Gotcha. Um, I did. And was that three o'clock? Yeah. In the morning. At three o'clock in the morning. So those are the allegations. All right. Is there anything else you want to tell me, sir? 
Um, I mean, I, I never, you know, we weren't arguing. We weren't fighting. We did. I did spill a soda on the roof of my car earlier that day. Um, and she is a server, so she gets home a little bit late. That's really the only time we have to spend. And I chose to spend our time washing the cars. And that, you know, I was renting a soda off my car and the water hose broke the window, the tip of it, because it's metal. Other than that, I don't know where the whole, you know, she pushed or whatever the allegations was from the officer. I'm not sure. I even spoke to a sergeant because he was one of the officers that came out. And I was explaining to him, you know, nothing, nobody's hitting nobody, nobody's fighting. We were, we were probably being a little bit too loud at three in the morning, but. All right, thank you. Ma'am, I'll stay your bond at $500 on count one. I'll make it $100 on count two. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, but didn't he just say he wanted contact? He did. Okay, so I don't understand that. I'm sorry? I don't understand that. I'm not going to allow it at this time. Okay. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. You don't live together, correct? Yes, we do. And okay. it's my house. Then you cannot now. I'll order that you must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Is that, you have to answer out loud? Yes. Any other conditions the state would request? Uh, um, if DCF is involved, you'll have to comply with any plan set in place by DCF. They did come out, but they said that there was no issue with them and that they were closing it. Right. If that's, I don't, I don't have access to that information. So if that's correct, then you don't have to worry about that. But if they come up with a plan, you have to comply with that. You understand? Yes. All right. Anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Yes. Steve. Steve or Dante. All right, good morning, ma'am. You're here in 22MM3086, charged with battery domestic violence. Does she qualify? Hold on one moment. Keep. All right. At this time, I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. Good morning, sir. Did you wish to testify? Yes. Please raise your right hand. Will you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? I do. Please state your name for the record. Anthony Mercadante. All right, let me see if the state has some questions for you. Good morning, sir. How do you know the defendant? She's my wife. Do you live together? Yes. While this case is pending, would you like to continue living together? Yes, I need to live with her, yes. We okay. need it. Has something like this happened before? Not like this. She's just without her meds, and this was a this was a mistake. I was calling nine one one to get the officers to come and either calm down the situation because she's not on her meds. She has a disorder which we believe is PTSD from working downtown at, during nine eleven, and when she's not on her meds, certain things happen, and I sometimes fail. I'm just as guilty as she is. I sometimes fail to, to handle it properly. So I called 911 thinking that they could de-escalate the, the situation that she was having or at least get her to a hospital. And the police were not very forward with me in telling me all of the outcomes. If I had known that this was the outcome instead of a hospital, I wouldn't have given them. I wouldn't have told them. Like, they were asking me what had happened, and I described what happened. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't battery or anything like that. She just, she threw a bag of frozen shrimp. That's it. Are you afraid of her, sir? No. I have no further questions, Your Honor. I have a nine-year-old daughter. All right, one moment. Ms. George, do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. Is there anything else you want to tell me? I just want to tell you that I want her to come home. She doesn't belong here. She's a model citizen. She just got a new job. 
She's doing great at it. She's a fantastic mother. She's a fantastic friend. Uh, she shouldn't be here. Uh, this is I'm I should be the one in here because I made this blunder thinking that it would be she'd go to a hospital, but I had no idea this would be the outcome. All right, thank you, sir. She just needs her medications. She'd be safe at home, and she needs to be home with her daughter. Her daughter needs her there. That's cute. Okay, so I plead with you, Your Honor, to please let her come home with me today. All right, thank you, sir. This was a mistake. The where, policeman where she kind work? of duped. You said she got a new job. Excuse me. Where does she work now? Is, will they if will they get word of all of this? I don't want this revealed to her employer. I'm just asking you. I'm not calling her. She works employer. for Signature Airlines. Okay. It's a private airline. Um, She's doing fantastic at it, and she needs it. She needs it, especially with the condition that she has. She needs these things. She needs her family, so please let me bring her home today. I plead with you. This was a mistake. All right, thank you. You'd be punishing me just as much as her as I'm the one who made the dumb mistake. Thought it would be a hospital visit. I should have just oh. tried to get her to the hospital, not call nine one one. She's so funny. She said he talks a lot. It's fine. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why she gets mad at me. I don't shut up. <laughs> You're All right. Well, I appreciate everything you said, but if you <laughs> pause. I'll address her. Is that okay? Yes, please. <laughs> um, Your Honor, given she has no history, um, they've been married for 11 years. I just asked um, for a no hostile contact order, um, and I asked she can qualify for pretrial release and pretrial release given um, the victim's testimony here today. It says she doesn't qualify. I said she could qualify, yeah. But she could. I read the affidavit. Mm -hmm. There's, there is probable cause, but mm -hmm. oh, there isn't. Whether beyond a reasonable doubt, that's a whole different question. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Please let her come. Does home. the state hold on? Hold on a second, sir. Does the state have any objection to pretrial release? No, Your Honor. Based on her history, the victim's testimony, mm -hmm. and the affidavit, I am inclined to put her on straight pretrial release. Yes, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, I'm going to release you on pretrial release, which means you don't have to post a monetary bond at this time, but you do have to comply with the conditions of pretrial release. So I'll allow peaceful contact with the victim. No yelling, no throwing things, no shoving, none of that. You understand? Yes. You can't possess a weapon, firearm, or ammunition. I don't have any. Good. Keep it that way. <laughs> I, I'm not... Any other conditions the state would request? Um, that she take her meds, Your Honor, and DCF was contacted, so just comply with any DCF plan. If there's a DCF plan put in place, you'll have to comply with that. And if there are any prescriptions that a doctor has prescribed for you, any treatment plans, you need to comply with those. You understand? I understand. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Good luck, sir. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Go ahead. Melvin Ruiz. Good morning. You're hearing 22MM3077, charged with battery and domestic violence. Based on his affidavit, he qualifies. Ms. George, I'll appoint your office. There is probable cause. Does either side wish to be heard on bond? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Sir, I'm going to set your bond at $500 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Good mm -hmm. luck, sir. No. No, we're going to not only put them on the service assistance. Is it Malcolm? Uh, just okay. Do boarding. okay, then you said to skip it. Okay. Correction said, and we skip it. But we will go back to it. I assume he's not here for dinner. That's crazy. Steve is wrong. Good morning, sir. You're here in 22MM3080, charged with battery domestic violence. Does he qualify? Yes. 
at this time, I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you based on his affidavit. He qualifies. Uh, good morning. Did you wish to testify? Yes, ma'am. Uh, raise your right hand to be sworn. Please call me swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you lie. Yes. Please state your name for the record. Marcellus Washington. I'm going to see if the state has some questions for you. Good morning, Mr. Washington. How do you know the defendants? It's my older brother. Do you live together? No, ma'am. I'm sorry, I can't really hear you. Can you get closer to the microphone? No, ma'am. No, you don't live together? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, while this case is pending, would you like to have contact with your brother? No, ma'am. I fear for my life. He came over my house, punched me in my face, and beat me up. And he told me that he, he was going to go to jail. He said as soon as he get out, he was going to come back over here and do the same thing. Do you know if your brother possesses any weapons? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he on drugs or anything. He just came and beat me up and he told me that as soon as he get out, which is he going to get out, he said he's going to come back over because he know where I live and beat me up. I still got a cut right here on my eye. And he came and slammed. He came on my property and did all that. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Right, any questions, Mr. George? No, Your Honor. All right, sir, thank you. Is there anything else you want to tell me this morning? Um, I'm, I'm j I just fear for my life. I, I, I don't know if you guys going to let him out and he's going to come over there and beat me up again. So, un unfortunately, in the state of Florida, or fortunately, depends on how you look at it, there are very few circumstances under which I can hold a defendant at no bond, and this is not one of those. I understand from your perspective that is not what you want to hear from me, but the statute requires that I set a bond in almost all cases in Florida. I can, however, impose bond conditions. I will order that he cannot have any contact with you, and I will order that he cannot come back to your residence. But like I said, unfortunately, I cannot hold him at no bond. So, I, like I said, I'll impose those conditions, but I'm, I'm not able to keep him in custody. You understand? Is there anything else you want to tell me? Uh, no, ma'am. Does he live anywhere near you? Um, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. All right, thank you. You can stay there while I finish the case, or you can leave. It's up to you. All right, uh, Mr. Wirch, you heard the testimony. Did you wish to be heard on bond? Yes, Your Honor. They don't live together. I believe if you issue the no contact order, um, that will be sufficient. Um, he actually resides in Haines City, so he plans on going back to Haines City. Um, he doesn't need to return there, so I just ask that you issue the no contact order and set up bond. All right, does the state wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Saunders, your bond is $1,000. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? No. You cannot speak to him. You cannot send a message through friends or family. You cannot send a text message. You cannot contact him on social media. Do you understand that? No. You cannot be within 1,000 feet of his residence or place of employment. You can't have any contact with a witness in this case. You cannot possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. I don't, I don't see any allegations of drugs or alcohol involved in this. No, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, sir. Thank you for coming. Good luck. Sir, please tell me your name. Tony Sellers. You're here in 22MM3058, charged with battery domestic violence. Based on his affidavit, he, he qualifies. Counselor, I'll appoint your office to represent him. Thank you. There is probable cause. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? 
Hey, Your Honor. Hey, Your Honor. I told you not to talk about the facts. Sir, your bond is $1,000 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim. Sir, did you hear me? No, I didn't. You can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, you can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. You must maintain a separate residence. I'll allow a one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings, but you cannot coordinate that with the victim. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. Ruben Soto. Good morning. You're here in 22MM251. Charged with battery, domestic violence, and two counts of resisting an officer without violence. Based on his affidavit, he qualifies, Ms. George. Mm -hmm. I'll appoint an attorney to represent you. There is probable cause. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? No, hey, Your Honor. No. Your Honor, I just I'm okay. sorry. Um, um, I just asked that you consider, although he does have um, some history, he has no failures to appear. Oh, sorry, that was misdemeanors. Was that misdemeanors? Oh, no, that's failures to appear. He has no failures to appear, so I just ask that you consider the fact that he has no failures to appear. And he does qualify for pretrial release, but given that the victim isn't here, Your Honor, I understand you won't place him on pretrial release, but considering he does qualify, so that you consider all of that when setting a monetary bond. Um, oh, I missed that. And additionally, Your Honor, actually, I'd ask that you would RO. R as to the second resisting without violence, the state can only charge for one resisting without um, violence when they're stemming from the same incident. Based on the affidavit, there's facts to support that he resisted two officers. Correct, Your Honor. However, um, the court has stated that if they're stemming from the same incident, that the state can only charge him for one resisting without violence. But that doesn't mean there's not probable cause for two. No, that's why I ask that you um, only give him a bond for one and ROR as the other, being that they can't um, go forward on both. So although there's enough for probable cause, they can't go forward on um, both resisting without violence. All right, thank you. So I see that he has a violation of violation of conditional release out of Virginia. That he has an active injunction against him from this victim. Can the state advise the victim of the 2021 violation of injunction? It says there are four of those from last year. I want to know if that's the same victim. Um. I will double check, Your Honor, but I would say it likely is only because there are convictions for domestic violence against the same victim. But I will double check, Your Honor. There's an active injunction currently, mm -hmm. which means that's another criminal charge that should be coming. Yes, Your Honor. And I just point to the fact that he is a military veteran and he does suffer from mental health illnesses. So, um, just taking all of that into consideration, he did see combat, Your Honor. Oh, he did not. I thought it said he did. He didn't see combat. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Right now, my main concern is your client appears to have a demonstrated lack of ability or willingness to comply with court orders. That concerns this court. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at the face sheet, he did, uh, it does state that he um, will be residing at his brother's house, um, being that he can't have contact with the victim. He already uh, found another location to live at. So I just ask that you consider all of those things. It is the same victim, Your Honor. Yeah, 
I just ask that you consider setting a higher monetary bond, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Do you have the injunction? I can't seem to get the case number right to pull it up. I don't know why I can't get that right, but I just cannot. I put that in, and every time I put it in, it's it comes oh, back as nothing. So I must be doing something wrong when entering it. While you search, Your Honor, I would like you to know that uh, the domestic violence has been going on since 2015 with the same victim. This happened 14, uh, 494 Pinewood Court. Respondent shall have no contact with the petitioner. Oh, sorry, it's Pickwood. And shall not re return to that residence. Can you give me another page? Mr. George, there's an active injunction, injunction. Your client was ordered not to be at the residence where he was arrested, and he was ordered not to have any contact with the petitioner in that case, who is the victim of this case. So, give me one moment to read this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so I see what judge it was. You know what judge it was? Wait, I want to read. I see the motion. I see this motion, Counselor. Do you have the what the? If you look on, um, let me see. We get to it. Let me see. One, two. I think there's a third page because they're not numbered. One, two, three. That's where it starts. Um, I think it's the second paragraph we begin. Talk about it. Applicant is required to teach a motion. But um, first, the parent is required to correct the teacher's attendance and have a room. thing is the statute says that the court can do it if there are no reasonable conditions of bond that the court can place on the defendant with which it will comply that balances his right to a bond with the responsibility to protect the victim and the public so I know the statute says that I, I read this but this is the like the motion so did the did the appellate court say this statute is unconstitutional and the judge can't do that under any circumstances no this is the second one we did the first one your honor and i can't keep that well that one was a domestic violence case um but what i need is the order from the court mm -hmm. because here's oh this was their ruling i just printed off their ruling in the end i think um i can print off the order your honor okay because this is a petition I need to see what the appellate court says. Oh, I see what you're saying. I printed off the wrong one. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is, it's very well reasoned and argued. Okay. But what I need is what's binding on this court, which is the court's mm -hmm. opinion. So if we can continue and recall his, and I'll have it printed for you to review. Okay, perfect. Thank We're going to recall him in just a moment. Thank you. And this board. Okay. Yes, sir. Good morning. You're here in 22MM3066, charged with battery domestic violence. Okay. I am going to appoint your office in this case as well. I'm sorry, Ms. George. I know you're doing something. Oh, no. We can even recall him after the break. Okay. That would, it's, that would be perfect. There's not a victim here waiting, so it's okay if we okay. take that time. Uh, there is probable cause. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? No, Your Honor. Mm, Your Honor, given, um, I just ask that you consider the fact that he has um, no um, criminal history uh, as an adult. It looks like he has some juvenile history arrest, but no convictions. So I ask that you consider all of that, no failure to appear. Um, and he has been in the Orlando area for over a year. He also qualifies for pretrial release? Mm, yep. Um, Your Honor, I was going to ask for pretrial release um, in this case. Uh, my client's currently unemployed, um, and he cannot afford a monetary bond. If he's on pretrial release, they will monitor him. Um, and if he violates, he could be brought back here and held at no bond. So I'd ask for pretrial release in this case. All right. I'm going to place you on pretrial release and require that you post a monetary bond, but I'll re significantly reduce that to $100. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? You have to answer out loud. Yes, ma'am. I can see your head nodding, but we're making a record, and the record won't reflect that. Yes, you can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. Were you two living together? Yes, ma'am, but I moved out. All right, because you can't now. I'll order you maintain a separate residence. Do you need to return to gather belongings, or did you already get them? No, ma'am. I need to get a little bit of clothes. That's okay. I'll allow one-time return with law enforcement to gather your belongings. Like five things, six things. You, you can go back one time. You got to call law enforcement. But you do that with law enforcement. Okay. All right? Yes, ma'am. Good luck. Stay in touch with your attorney. Thank you. You're welcome. Andre Wilkie. Waiting for Andre. 
Are they going to have to keep waiting because we're not done with this yet? Okay. Uh, good morning. You're here in 22MM3065, charged with battery dating violence. Does he qualify? Give me one moment. I'm going to appoint your office, Ms. George, based on the affidavit. He qualifies. Uh, good morning. Did you wish to testify? Yes. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Sir, you look at me or the wall. You solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guide. Yes. Please state your name for the record. Ariel Martinez. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Ariel Martinez. All right. Does the state have some questions? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Martinez. How do you know the defendant? Uh, he's my ex-boyfriend. Do you live together? Not currently, no. Okay. Has something like this happened before? Um, not to this extent, no. Are you afraid of him? Sometimes, yes. Only when he's in, you know, his really angry stages. While this case is pending, would you like to have contact with him? No. I have no further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Any questions, Ms. George? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you, ma'am. Is there anything else you want to tell me? No. All right, you can stay there or you can leave. It's up to you. All right, does either party wish to be heard on bond? No, Your Honor. Ms. George? Um, no, Your Honor. Oh, Your Honor, he has, oh, no, no, Your Honor. I just asked for a monetary bond, Your Honor, of um, 500 for, for. The only criminal history I see is out of New York and New Jersey. I don't, I don't know what, what are convictions and what are not. So, all right. At this time, sir, your bond is $500 with special conditions. You can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, ma'am. You can't be within a thousand feet of her residence or place of employment. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. Any other conditions of state request? No, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, sir. Correct. Okay. Is the bond hearing defendant up here? Do we know? Okay. Osiris Malcolm. This is 22MM192. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. This is Malcolm. Does he qualify? Which one? The one we missed. Okay. I'm going to appoint your office, Ms. George. Based on his affidavit, he qualifies. There is probable cause. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? I think he has nothing. Oh, wait. We have a witness. I apologize. I was flipping. Who is this? <laughs> Malcolm. It's the one we skipped earlier. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, ma'am. Do you wish to testify? Uh, yes, ma'am. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Please, I only swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guide. Yes. Thank you. State your name for the record. Ashley Wiggins. Thank you. I'm sorry, what's your name? Ashley Wiggins. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, does the state have some questions? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Wiggins. How do you know the defendant? Um, I had met him while I was staying in the shelter. He's my boyfriend. Do you live together? Yes. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Yes. While this case is pending, would you like to have contact with him? I'm sorry? While this case is pending, would you like to have contact with him? Yes. Okay. Are you afraid of him? No. All right. I have no further questions. All right. Thank you. And Ms. George, any questions? No, Your Honor. All right. Oh, she's gone. She put the baby down. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, well, that was quick. <laughs> so you can hold the baby. Okay. Is there anything else you want to tell me? Um, no, that's it. Okay. You can either stay in that room or you can go back out if you want. But I need to stay? No, you can go back out if you want. Okay. Whatever's easiest with the kids, you decide. Okay. Thank you. Okay.
Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Mr. <clears throat> wish to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. I would just um, ask that given the victim's testimony that you issue a no hostile uh, contact order. They're both living together. Um, I believe it's a um, hotel. Um, additionally, it looks like he, um, although he has some uh, arrests, he has no convictions. Um, here in Florida for domestic violence, so I ask that you consider all of those things as well as no failures to appear. Um, she, the victim also stated in the arrest affidavit she does not want to press charges, so I'd ask that you consider all of those factors. Um, and I think that uh, both parties were fighting, so just ask that now that things have calmed down, you allow them to live together um, as they're both trying to get back on their feet, Your Honor. All right, what says the state? Um, state would just make note that there are one, two, three, four, three other instances of either battery or assault, um, and at least two of those have been with the same victim. The earliest that I have seen is from 2020, Your Honor. Was that the aggravated battery on a pregnant person? I believe that was the one that I just looked at. Did she leave? She left? There was an aggravated battery on a pregnant person? Yes, Your Honor. And that was her? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, she disappeared. Oh. Uh, all of the cases have been no built as defense indicated, but there have been these incidences. Your Honor. Right. All right, sir, your bond is $500. At this time, you can have no contact with the victim. Do you understand what no contact means? Yes, I do. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm, or ammunition. You can look straight ahead. You must maintain a separate residence. But if you have items at that motel, I'll allow you to return one time with law enforcement to gather those items. But you guys can't live in the same room now. You understand that? Yes. Can I uh, speak to you? Yes, sir, you can say anything you want, but everything you say is being recorded and can be used against you later. Do you understand that? Okay. Raise your right hand to be sworn. <sighs> Will you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guide? Thanks, sir. If I may, I would, again, recommend you not talk about the facts or anything pertaining to this case. I mean, you have been placed under oath. Everything you're saying... Can be record can be pulled from the recording and used against you later. I would recommend you not speak until you're one on one with your attorney. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I'd like to speak. Okay, I mean, sir. You're talk. You are the reason why I'm speaking is because me and my girl are trying to get on our feet, and um, I really don't have anywhere else to go since she has my kids. So I want to go back to uh, the the incident in November twenty. It was November twenty second. At 3 or 4 in the morning, the police said they arrest me, which they did. But they arrived at my house at 8.52. And then they left the house roughly before 10 o'clock, saying that it was no probable cause and saying that um, they understood that my girl was pregnant and she was just upset because she wanted to talk to me. So they left and then they came back five hours later to arrest me just because they seen on my record that I had got arrested before. So I believe that that should be taken into consideration. All right, thank you, sir. And, and, and the, the, the officer also falsified evidence, which in this case right here, they're doing the same thing. So this is becoming more of a lawsuit than a proper arrest. All right, sir. Uh, this court doesn't handle lawsuits, so if you want to file a lawsuit, you can do that. It, it won't be today. Did I, well, hold on, did I, was there anything else I needed? And no weapons? Okay. Is this the bond hearing? Oh, this is Creole. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, I don't call you. Okay, uh, what's her name? Janice Green. No. 
Jean. Thank you. Good morning. This is Judge Gibson. Who do I have on the line? Hi, this is Isabel DeRocher, interpreter. Has the interpreter been sworn? I have not. Please raise your right hand. Yes, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear to translate from Creole to English, from English to Creole to the best of your ability? I do. Thank you. All right. Good morning, ma'am. Please tell me your name. Bonjour, madame. Dim qui j'en rêvais. Get close to the microphone. Jean-Joanne. Jean Jean-Joanne. Jean-Joanne. 22MM3081. You're here charged with battery domestic violence. Numéro 4, c'est 22MM3081. Oui, si à Jodia, parce que vous accusez de violence domestique, attaque. Ma'am, do you wish to have an attorney represent you? Madame, est-ce que vous voulez bien un avocat qui pourrait représenter vous? I don't know. I don't know. All right, you're charged with a crime punishable by up to a year in jail and a thousand dollar fine. Ou accusé de un crime qui est capable de recevoir jusqu'à un an en prison et jusqu'à et un mille dollars amende. I read the probable cause affidavit. There is probable cause here. Juge là, lui, attestation, lui joint que gain assez évidence pour y accepter que crime a été fait. Ma'am, you have the right to speak to an attorney. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, I can consider appointing one to represent you. Okay. Madame, vous avez droit parler avec un avocat. Si vous pas gain d'argent pour pour un avocat, juge là qu'a pas boyon. Do you want to speak to an attorney? Vous voulez parler avec un avocat? I don't want to speak to an attorney, madame. Parlez fort. I don't want to speak to an attorney. I don't want to speak to an attorney. I don't know anything like that. I want to get my child at school. I don't know anything about that. I just had a child that I want to get to school. Your Honor, I... I would ask, given the um, the language barrier that you appoint us, um, even f for the time being, Your Honor, so at least we can get a Creole interpreter and speak with her um, so she understands um, more in depth one-on-one. -on -one. She has no criminal history other than one arrest. Um, so I think she, she does need uh, the public defender to be appointed. It looks like she's unemployed as well, Your Honor. Dit qu'elle est que ou pas travail qui donc et ou t'as besoin en défenseur public ou t'as besoin d'un avocat qui pour parler ensemble avec vous pour expliquer où ça va passer puis bien. All right, I'm going to at least provisionally appoint the public defender's office to represent you, ma'am. Ok, juge là à bord défenseur public qui pour représenter ou pour euh, au moins pour commencer car. Let me ask, does the state wish to be heard on bond? Est-ce que l'État veut être dit un bagage soit fait de bond? Not with regard to bond, no, Your Honor. No, we don't have anything to do with bond. But with regard to something else? Um, just the conditions, Your Honor. I'm sure you'll cover most of them, but just the okay. conditions. Simply sous conditions, Judge. All right. Uh, Ms. George? Um, given her, she does not have a criminal history, Your Honor, I would just ask for a $500 bond. Comme vous parlez en histoire criminelle, avocat m'a demandé pour un bond de 500 dollars. All right, ma'am. I will set your bond at 500 dollars. Je la mette bon nous caution pour 500 dollars. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim. Avec conditions spéciales, ou pas capable de gagner aucun contact avec victime là. Do you understand that no contact means you cannot speak to him, call him on the phone, send him a text message, no contact at all. Vous comprenez que nos contacts là, vous les dites que vous pas capable de parler avec elle et face à face, vous pas capable de parler dans le téléphone, vous pas capable de voyer message pour lui. Vous comprenez? Ok, 
que é se uma avoa mensagem? Who, who can I send a message to? No, you cannot send any message at all to Leslie. What's his last name? D A U T R U C H E. Doutrush. Eu para cá para ver mensagem para o mundo que ele é Leslie. Mesmo que tudo mais é não mesmo, mas tudo mais não pode chamar não mesmo Leslie. Não viu porque tudo depois tudo mais não pode. Vou estar atendendo o Madam. Depois tudo está feito não mesmo, mas depois tudo lá pode chamar não mesmo Leslie. Se ele colhe mal, chega depois tudo mal, ele colhe para ser o apartment bagaí cá e mal chega um lote cá e por mais que por tudo lá tem. Ok, então. My child, my child was never my since since the child was born, the child was never in Leslie's hand. I went to get my child at school. Because I had an appointment and I needed to change home. Madam um, interpreter, could you please advise the client not to talk about the facts of the case here today? Di pas parler de bagay ki en rapport avec ka ici a jodia devant juge la. Pas parler de bagay yo devant juge la pour kunya. Ma'am, do you understand that I am ordering you cannot have any contact with Leslie Dautrus? Est-ce que vous comprenez que le juge là a pardonné que vous n'êtes pas capable de gagner aucun contact avec M. Kirillé Leslie? Mais petit là, c'est non, même ni, c'est moi qui fais tout le monde ensemble avec lui. Well, I have, the child is, is in my hand and, and I had the child with him, but the child is in my hand. I'm not talking about the child right now, I'm talking about Leslie. You cannot have juge contact la... with Leslie. Juge la pas parlé de ti moun la kounya, la parlé de moun ki rele Leslie a. Ok? Ou pas kapap gen aucun contact avec Leslie. You also cannot possess a weapon of any kind, a firearm or ammunition. Ou pas kapap gen aucun zam ou bien aucun zam a feu ou bien aucun munition. Um, the interpreter cannot hear. Ma'am, please step close to the microphone. Betty Munio na la ou se police la ki te kembe yon pa gen moun pou pran yon pou mwam da men konen nan men ki es ti Munio. Yese sa ki fe ke depi yon mwam da. The kids are gonna be in the street. The police took them from me. I wanna know who is going to, where are the kids going to be? I don't have the answer to that. You'll have to comply with anyone. I'm gonna pa bezon gen. I don't need to speak to him. I just need to know about my children to know where, where they are going to be. The Department of Children and Families was contacted. They will know where the children are and they will develop a plan with which you must comply. Yes, Papa. Department Simon avec. Département Timon avec famille pour aller gagner un plan. Il a parlé avec vous, il a pris les côtés Timon à pied et il a gagné un plan que il a partagé ensemble avec vous et que vous avez besoin d'obéir. Papa, petit moi marié, je ne peux jamais qu'on parle ensemble avec lui. The father of my children is is married. I was never talking with him. Ma'am, I I'm not involved in your family case, I'm only involved today in this criminal charge. Okay, juge la pas gagne rien pour ouais avec ka familial ou, li simplement abdi ou de qui sa ou accusé et avec de nan ka criminel ou, se sa seulement la pregle. For now, because of this criminal charge, you cannot return to Sadler Elementary School. Pour Kounia, ou pas capable de retourner. Pour tes cas criminels qui contournent même Kounia, ou pas capable de retourner dans Sadler Elementary. And you may not have contact with any witness in this case. Et ou pas capable de gagner contact avec témoin dans le cas. Ça, c'est menti, y'a fait parce que ça a les discriminations parce que m'a gagné un bagage de dossier criminel sous moi. I don't. I that that that's a lie. It's it's called discrimination because I I don't have any any criminal things on me. No, no. This is a criminal charge. You are currently charged with a crime violating the laws of the state of Florida. No. Ka ki fe ke ou la devan juge la kunya se sa ki ka criminel la ou akuse ko te viole la loi Florida. 
Your bond is $500 with those conditions that I've already stated. On gain un bond $500 avec condition que juge la gain tant beau. Yeah, mko nem gain bond $500 pour me payer. I know I have a $500 bond to pay. Le petit la moi ou merci a prédi et Paul petit la la chire pour li et puis moi mode merci a pour la gain. He was he was grabbing he was grabbing the child he was he was getting getting the child and I, I bit him so he could let the child go. I didn't want him to get my child's shoulder detached. He, he was he was pulling on her. All right, ma'am. This we're not having a trial here today the purpose of this hearing is only to establish probable cause for the offense and your bond conditions okay the don't put this la jodi a c'est pour nous établir qui bond ou gagner et qui qualité bagaille ou capable faire pour capable sortir nous pas parler de cas jodi a you may have many defenses to this crime and the state may not file the charges i don't have control of that ou gain droit gain en pile défense pour crime là Et l'État ne doit pas remplir aucune accusation, mais juge là pas cap gain ou qu'on contrôle sous sa cunia. But if I were you, I would call the phone number on that green piece of paper and make an appointment to see my attorney right away. Mais si moi t'es où, numéro de téléphone qui n'a pas pied vert là, que au bord, moi t'as les numéros ça, moi t'as fait un appointement pour parler avec mon avocat tout de suite. Good luck, ma'am. Bonne chance, madame. All right, that's all we have for the Creole interpreter. All right, thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. All right, uh, I'll appoint the public defender's office. These are out of county cases 22 CF 841 and 21 CF 2221. I will waive the appearance, Your Honor. There's no bond, so we'll notify. I forget which county. Maybe Hillsborough. Osceola? Okay. We, and we have an attorney on the line for the bond hearing. Okay. All right, let's address these people that are here. Tell me your name. You're here in 20, 2516 CF. You have warrants out of Seminole County for failing to appear on some drug charges. There is no bond authorized. We'll notify Seminole County that you're here so you can be transported. How long does that usually take? I, honestly, I don't know. COVID slowed it way down, but I think everyone's transporting now, so I think it should be quick. Within a couple of days, they'll come and get you. All right, good luck. Yeah, are you going to take any action on her out on bond? No. And to the previous case for Lucius Smith, you said there were no bonds on both of his warrants? Yes. He has a $1,500 bond on the 481 case. Okay, we'll leave that then. I just misread it. Tell me your name. Shanice Green. Sorry? Shanice Green. All right, you're here in 21 CF 5100 for violating probation. The allegations are that you failed to report as directed and changed your residence without first procuring the consent of your probation officer. There's no bond authorized on that warrant. I'll appoint well, a public defender to represent to build, you. So I didn't change my address. There's already a warrant signed, so I can't change that today. What will happen is your attorney will schedule it for a hearing. If you have a defense, the judge might change that, but I can't change it today. Okay. Oh, she doesn't qualify? All right. Ma'am, if you want an attorney to represent you, you're going to have to hire one because you don't qualify. And as for the out on bond, I'm revoking that ROR. 22mm1219. What is she talking about? She has a battery case. Is that correct? That's correct. Ma okay. Um, oh, okay. for the violation of probation. I was looking at the wrong person. That's why I was confused. Yeah, it's a VOP with no bond, so I'm going to revoke the battery yes, and hold her at no it. bond. Mm -hmm. So she gets credit for all of that. Yes, I would. Ha she doesn't qualify for your office, but... Oh, okay. I just have a question. Yes. And then do I connect on here? Hmm. WebEx? Uh, nope. 
It says I have to have a link. Okay, there's a call. That's it. That's not good. There should just be, like normally in the other courtrooms, you just click on it and it automatically connects. But this, when you click on this, it says you have to enter something. Can you ask my JA what link she sent? And Oh no, not for, it's for the judge, I'm sorry. Those are both, Your Honor. And hey, it actually you. has an aggravated stalking in there as well. They mention it in the response. Okay, good, thank you. And uh, Ms. Eugene, are you covering the bond hearing for the state? It appears so, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I apologize. Yes. yes I apologize. <laughs> oh, man. Bond court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of bond court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos. Yeah, I put it in. Okay. All right. Y'all ready? Yes. We're on the record. It's 1136. Still. I'm still drinking this one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. I'm not really doing arraignments, right? No, I don't think so. If they're bonded. It, it, it's fine. <laughs> that's, that's essentially my point. Is that also, they both bonded. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Twice in two years. Open the mat. Yeah. Right. I, you never see her face. Like Miss George over the break, she took it off and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> mask, I should clarify that. We are on the record. She took the mask off. <laughs> Speaking of things we say on the record, I regret later. <laughs> Good morning, ma'am. Can you tell me your name? I'm sorry. Uh, Dorothy Collins, Dorothy. All right, Ms. Collins, you're here charged with trespass on property after warning. Did the state have an offer? Uh, adjudication of guilt, credit time yeah. served, no return to the Silver Star Animal Hospital. And, Your Honor, um, she has been deemed incompetent. Um, her last evaluation was May 21st of um, 2021 by Dr. Ruiz. Um, and if you look, looks like she has the last trespass was in 2020. So um, I'd ask that you just... Um, I'm going to appoint the public defender's office at this time. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Collins, I'm appointing an attorney to represent you. Based on that information uh, right now, I can't take a plea in this case, but does the state object to me releasing her on her own recognizance? Hey, Your Honor. Um, thank you for that. Your Honor, if you can ask defense to inquire if the defendant has a smartphone and therefore she can mm -hmm. enroll in the e-notify. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
but for that, she's transient, and therefore we will have no way to call into any of this. Does she have a phone, counselor? She does, Your Honor. She says she does. I'm just going to write the case number because I think she's going to need it once we start the Q&A. Okay. Yes. So I have May 24th at 1 o'clock. They're going to have to go down and find out your next court date. Mm. All right, ma'am. I need you to stay in touch with your attorney, okay? Mm. All right. Mm. So that's the next court date. Mm. There you go. Mm. Joanna, can we just ask for a no return? Oh, also, Ms. Collins. Ms. Collins, you can't go back. Okay. Don't go back there, okay? No, no return to the location. Thank you, Counselor. Dwight Sworn. All right, Mr. Sworn, you're here. Charged with disorderly conduct. Hold on, I don't have a case number. It's 22MO597. Was there an offer? There was, Your Honor. However, um, uh, he also just had a recent evaluation, actually March of this year, by Dr. Aries. Um, he suffers from a, a brain injury. So I would ask for an ROR in this case um, and have him sign up with the E-Notify as well. Um, All right, does the state have any objection? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Sworn, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. I'm going to release you on your own recognizance, but I need you to follow your attorney's directions and enroll in that program so you know when your next court date is. Because if you don't come to court, the judge could issue a warrant for your arrest. Do you understand? Okay. And can you, you have I don't have the case number. Can you give me the case number? Yeah, it's 22MO597. <clears throat> you have the arraignment date? Same date. March, I mean, I'm sorry. May 24th at 1 p.m. Okay. That's your next court date downtown. You got to show up. May 24th at 1, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure you call that number, okay, sir? Okay. Calderon. Sir, you're here in 22 CF 5264, charged with grand theft. Does he qualify? Sir, I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you in this case. There is probable cause here. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? Uh, no, Your Honor. Nothing from the state. Mm, only that, although Your Honor just asked that you consider, although he does have two failures to appear, it was all the way back in 2008. Um, and he's currently unemployed, so I just ask that you take that into consideration with setting the bond. <clears throat> All right, sir, at this time, I'll set your bond at $1,000 with special conditions. You cannot return to that Walgreens. Do you know where that is? Don't go back there. And you can't have any contact with any victim or witness in the case. Stay in touch with your attorney. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good luck. Sharon McClure. Good morning. You're here in 22 CF 5272, charged with possession of methamphetamine, possession of a controlled substance with intent to sell or deliver, possession of cannabis with intent to sell or deliver, and no valid driver's license. Does she qualify? She did. All right, ma'am, do you wish to speak to an attorney? Do you want to have a lawyer represent you? Yes. All right, do you have the money to hire a lawyer? Um, a public defender would help. I'm sorry? A public defender would help. Well, that's not how that works. If you have the money to hire an attorney, you don't qualify. So I need you to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guide? Yes. Thank you. Ma'am, do you have a job? Yes. How much money do you make? Um, I make $10 an hour at the sitter and hire quest. I work at both. And you work 40 hours a week? Yeah. Do you have any dependents? Just me and my dog when she's at the house. I don't think that, that'll qualify. It's under it. 
400. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Ms. George, did you wish to be heard on anything? Your Honor, um, I just ask that in this case, uh, you consider the fact that she has no um, failures to appear um, in her history. I know she was arrested for meth, but I don't see any convictions on her history in her history here in Florida. So I ask that you consider that. Last conviction that I see that was out of state was in 2018. So I'd ask that you consider all of those factors when setting the bond. Um, and although she had multiple drugs, it does not appear she had huge amounts of drugs. So I just ask that you consider all of those factors when setting the bond. Um, in this case. All right, what says the state? State has uh, no comment with regard to the bond amount, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, <clears throat> I'm going to stay your bonds as listed in the affidavit. Count one will be $150, count two, 15,000, count three, 150, count four, 150. I'm sorry, 100. With special conditions, you can't possess or consume any controlled substance without a valid prescription or have contact with any known drug dealers. You'll be subject to random drug screens while out on bond. Do you understand? No valid driver's license? Um, could you have a 30-day grace period, Your Honor, for marijuana? Yes, for the marijuana. And that's just on the felony case, Your Honor, the RUAs? I'm sorry, what? The RUAs is just on the felony case? Yes. Is the no valid driver's license a different case number? Mm -hmm. I didn't put that case number on the record. So just on the felony. Correct. All right. Good luck, ma'am. Stay in touch with your attorney. Thank you, ma'am. Tia Abdul Rahman. Behavior. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. 22 MM 3075. Thank you. Does he qualify? An affidavit for him. All right. I'm going to reset him for tomorrow then. Because he's behavior. Um. <clears throat> oh, this guy? I think, he, Your Honor, if you look, he has multiple um, Baker Acts, um, mental health issues. Um, I just, I, I would ask, I'm not sure if he's going to show up, but I would ask that you provisionally appoint. Um, Rukia? Is it Rukia? Or she, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I see that. She has multiple Baker Acts. So I just ask, I'll, if you appoint us, I will, at least provisionally, um, I will waive the appearance. I would ask that she at least be screened for mental health pretrial release um, based on her, her mental health issues. I'll do all of that. I'll appoint her office. Are you waiving her appearance today? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'll leave the bonds as set for right now with a... No victim contact, no return, and or have her screen for mental health pretrial release if she qualifies for that. The same conditions, but no monetary bond. Thank you. I, I apologize, Your Honor. So I understand it being mental health pretrial release, but if she doesn't qualify, it's the 500 500? Okay. Yes, I'm just staying it as listed in the affidavit. Thank you. Good morning, sir. You're here in 22MM3076, charged with loitering or prowling and resisting without violence. Was there an offer? Yes, Your Honor. Um, the offer is uh, an adjudication of guilt, credit time served, no return to 55 West Church Street. Um, Mr. We went over his, Mr. Disson would like to accept the state's offer, enter a plea of no contest. We did go over all his rights. He understands his rights. I would like to accept the state's offer. Please raise your right hand, sir. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guys? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, sir, you heard what Ms. George just said as a friend of the court. Is that what you want to do here today? Yes, ma'am. And you had the opportunity to discuss with an attorney the rights you'd be giving up if you enter a plea of guilty or no contest. Do you understand those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you read this form, sir? That's the form you went over with the attorney. Oh, yeah, then, yeah. Is that your signature? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry, I want to make sure you can see it. I know it's far. 
you have any questions for me about the rights you're giving up? Um, no, ma'am. Do you understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, this plea could subject you to deportation? Yes, ma'am. Do you understand that if you're on probation anywhere, this plea could violate that probation? Yes, ma'am. All right, at this time, how do you wish to plead to the charges of loitering or prowling and resisting an officer without violence? No contest. I'll accept your plea. I find it's freely and voluntarily made. I'll adjudicate you guilty, give you credit for the two days, two days you've been in custody. I have to order that you pay court costs. That's a little over $300. How long do you need to pay that? Um, can you give him a year, Your Honor? He doesn't have a job. I'll give you a year if you pay it faster it's done okay, no, no problem. Thank you. and you cannot return to 55 um, West, Church, West Street. Church Street and you have 30 days to appeal in writing do you understand yes, good luck sir James Hood is behavior can we bring him back tomorrow well is there an offer in that case there is but we can't plead him your honor he has been deemed incompetent I got it um, all right I'm gonna appoint the public defender um, I'd, act, I'd ask, um, in this case, also for an ROR. I know he's out on the indecent, but in this particular case, Your Honor, it does not appear he was doing anything violent in nature. I know he was on the property, but it doesn't say that he was doing anything um, that would be a danger to, to the community. Um, so I'd ask for the, an ROR in this case and take no action on the out on bond. Uh, what says the state? I would object, Your Honor, only because he's not present to hear the whole thing about the e-notify. He is transient. He's also incompetent. Um, so if we could at least give him a bond, even if it's a reduced amount. Um, but I have no objection to the no action on the out on bond. All right, I will take no action on the out on bond case. Is it is it possible to find out if he has a phone and help him enroll and e-notify if he's not here? Yes, Your Honor. What I'll do is I can have social services go down right after court. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I understand the state's objection. I'm, I'm going to release him on his own recognizance with the condition that he cannot return to the Orlando Sentinel. It's 633 North Orange Avenue. Yes. And if you'll make sure that happens, Councilman. Yes, Sure. I will look. Brandon Ortiz, Rudolph Burgess. Well, good morning, Mr. Burgess. You're here charged with disorderly conduct in 22MO595. Let me ask, did the state have an offer in this case? So withholding credit time. What are my charges? You're charged with disorderly conduct. So in uh, in Orlando, we have a city ordinance that says that you can't ask for things from a car or receive anything from a car because it's not it's not safe for the cars. They're afraid that people are going to get hit. So the charge is disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. Were you able to speak with him? Mm -hmm. Mr. George? I did speak with him, Your Honor. Um, we went over all the rights he would be given up. He understands those rights and would like to accept the state's offer and answer a plea of no contest. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Burgess, can I have you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you God? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Mr. Burgess. Miss George is an attorney. She's not rep you can put your hand down now. She's not representing you today, but she talked to you about the state's offer and the rights that you'd be giving up if you accept it. Did you understand those rights? I gotta say yes, you can. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any questions for me about them? No, ma'am. You understand we're not gonna have a jury trial here today. Right. I'm going to sentence you today. Right. Is that what you want me to do? Do what? You want me to sentence you today? That's right, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And did you read this form? Is that your signature? Yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Burgess, you understand that if you're on probation anywhere, 
this plea could violate that probation. Yes, ma'am. I'm not saying you are, but I don't know if no, you are. You understand if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could be deported. Right. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. I, I hear you saying, mm-hmm, but we're yes, making a record, and the record won't reflect okay. that. Um, okay, sir. So at this time, understanding all those rights, how do you wish to plead to the charge of disorderly conduct? Guilty. I'll accept your plea of guilty. I find it's freely and voluntarily made. I'll withhold adjudication, give you credit for the two days, two days you've been in custody. Mr. Burgess, do you have a job? No, ma'am. Do you have a place to live? No, ma'am. I'm going to reduce that to a lien. Thank you. All right. Good luck, sir. You have 30 days to appeal in writing. What? You have 30 days to appeal in case you want to. I don't know why you would want to, but you can. What happened with Santos? Oh, Renan Santos? Oh. Uh, hold on, where's the inmate number? No. Hold on. No, I got it. I got it. I <laughs> Go ahead, you can laugh. I it took me a minute. It's a lot of little tiny letters and numbers, okay? 22010600. He's charged with battery. He bonded. He bonded. Yes, ma'am. Oh, William Carnegie. Good morning, sir. You're here in 22MO596, charged with disorderly conduct. Was there an offer? Um, the offer was a withhold credit time served in court costs. Um, Mr. Carnegie would like to accept the state's offer and answer a plea of no contest. We did go over all his rights. He understands his rights. He would like to accept the offer. Raise your right hand, please, sir. Mr. Carl, let me swear in affirm the testimony you're about to give should be the truth, the whole truth, to help you guide. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, sir. <clears throat> you had the opportunity to speak with an attorney about the rights you'd be giving up if you enter a plea of guilty or no contest. Do you understand those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you read this form? Yes, ma'am. Is that your signature? Yes, ma'am. All right. It further explains those rights. Do you have any questions for me about them? No, ma'am. You understand that if you're on probation anywhere, this plea could violate that probation? Yes, ma'am. And if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could be deported? Yes, ma'am. All right. At this time, and there is probable cause. At this time, sir, how do you wish to plead to the charge of disorderly conduct? No contest. I'll accept your plea. I find it's freely and voluntarily made. I'll withhold adjudication, give you credit for the two days. two days you've been in custody. Sir, I have to order that you pay court costs. That's around $300. Do you have a job? No, ma'am. Do you have a home? No, ma'am. I'm going to reduce that to a lien. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Good luck, sir. You have 30 days to appeal in writing. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Audrey Brokaw, I don't have that one. No, I have David Bain. Okay. All right. Please tell me your name. My name? Uh, David Bain. All right, Mr. Bain, you have two cases. 22MM2772 is a trespass on property after warning. A warrant was issued for your arrest in this case. So it, Oh, you can't hear me? Thank you. I'll say thank you. Oh, yes, ma'am. All right, sir, can you hear me any better? Yes, ma'am. All right. You're here in two cases. There was a warrant issued for your arrest in 22MM2772, charging you with trespass on property after warning. Another judge has already found probable cause in that case. I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. Your bond is $500 with special conditions. You cannot return to Sapphire, Sapphire Bay. What's the name of that resort? Sapphire, I think it's Sapphire Bay, hold on. 
No, Cabana Bay Beach. You know what? You can't go back to any Universal Studios property for the time being. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay. And you can't have contact with any witness in that case. Yes, ma'am. You also have 21 CF 11865. A KPS was issued for your arrest for failing to appear for court. Let me look at this KPS. On charges of petty theft with two prior convictions. The judge who issued the KPS authorized a bond of $5,000. I'll also appoint an attorney to represent you in that case as well. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you. Maurice Bright, ma'am. Good morning. You're here in 22 CF 5277 <clears throat> on charges of trafficking in cocaine with greater than 400 grams with a firearm, <laughs> carrying a concealed firearm. I would argue no PC. Hold on a minute. Let me get there. Did I miss my answer? I don't see a supplement. I see Hold a on. I have, I have three charges. And oh, okay. Possession of a concealed weapon or firearm by a convicted felon. Does he qualify for the public defender? He does. All right. I'll appoint your office, Ms. George. Okay. Did you wish to be heard? All right. Give us a moment, sir. I'm sorry. Well, that's what the allegation is. I just want to be sure. Yeah, I would argue no PC to the trafficking of cocaine over 400 grams with a firearm. Based on the arrest affidavit, it, the only um, amount that is shown is. 30. Oh, I'm sorry. It says under 400 in the probable cause affidavit, but it, the greater than sign is facing the wrong way. Okay. Yeah. That it was it's less than 400 grams. Yes. Okay. okay. It's 34.1 grams. Now I understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. So has your honor found PC? Um, I have not yet, but I, I'm just telling you that the... It's the wrong symbol. Right, the symbol is facing the, the wrong way. It should be under 400 grams. So are you are you still arguing there's no probable cause for the trafficking? Yes. Yes, you're not you, your, your attorney. Let me see the statute. Isn't trafficking just based on weight? Yes. Mm -hmm. Trafficking. So it's thirty. It's either sale or possession with intent to sell, and then trafficking based on weight. Yes. It wasn't a trafficking. <laughs> I was just looking for how much the cocaine. Four grams. Is it four grams or more? It's twenty-eight grams or more of cocaine. Okay. All right. And how many are, grams are in this probable cause affidavit? Thirty-four. All right. So it is trafficking. Mm -hmm. It's just um, the un the under. I guess. Correct. All right. I are you, are you still arguing there's no probable cause? No, Your Honor. As long as um, <clears throat> you just correct that. It may just be on my on the sheet. The face. No, it's on all of them. I think the problem is the symbol is just facing the wrong mm -hmm. way, but it's less than. 400 grams. You can. Yeah. And there is probable cause for the firearm. All right. Is it a different I don't know. Is it a different, is it the same statute? They just wrote it wrong? Same statute. It's just okay. the wrong. All right. So does either party wish to be heard on bond? Uh, no, Your Honor. It is? It, it's, this wouldn't be one of them, no. Okay. Um, Your Honor, as far as his, um, the out on bond 2022 CF 1568AO, I would um, ask that although there's similar charges, um, the state has not filed on that. He was arrested back in February 9th um, of this year and formal charges have not been filed. Um, 
And I just ask that you set a bond on the trafficking um, in cocaine. Um, his last conviction was um, back in 2015, Your Honor. So I just ask that you consider all of those factors. Seven years. It shows his last conviction was in 2014, I'm sorry, 2015. He was released from the Department of Corrections mm -hmm. for charges of possession with a gun or ammunition. I see it looks like almost all of his adult offenses are drug related. And while out on bond for possession of cocaine with intent to sell or deliver, he was arrested for possessing cocaine with a firearm. <clears throat> does anyone know, while this court does not strictly adhere to a bond schedule, does anyone know what the bond schedule recommends for the, this amount of trafficking? 100000 Thank you. That is the cocaine, 28 grams, between 28 and 200 with a firearm. I see. Without the firearm, it would be 50000 All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Sir, I'm going to set your bond at $100,000 on count one, $4,000 on count two, $4,000 on count three. With special conditions, you can't possess or consume any controlled substance without a valid prescription. You can't possess or consume, I'm sorry, you can't possess a weapon of any kind, firearm or ammunition. And at this time, I'm revoking your bond in 22 CF 1568. Stay in touch with your attorney, sir. I may not have, but I meant to. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Lisa Brown, Felicia Monique Brown Williams. I'm sorry? It's Felicia Brown Williams. All right, ma'am, you're here in 22 CF 4950 because a warrant was issued for your arrest charging you with petty theft with two prior convictions. Another judge has already found probable cause in this case. Does she qualify? All right, I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Your bond in this case is $5,000. With special conditions, you can't return to the scene and you can't have contact with any victim or witness in the case. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Ask me to a public defender. Hold on just a second. Yes. I'm just checking the dates, Your Honor, because okay. she has a lot, and they're all warrants, it looks like. Yeah, there's a lot. I did. So she bonded out on this one on April 30th. Yes, I bonded out on the eight charges April 30th, ma'am. And then they hit me with uh, uh, um, another thing, which is this here. And I was going to court yesterday, me and my mom, and they come and arrest me at the 14 office. I was trying to find what courtroom I go in because that Friday the public defender told me I had a court date which I didn't know when you get out of jail that the court date stop, go back. Stop, stop, stop talking. Yeah, so the allegation in this one is that it occurred on April yeah. 3rd? April 7th? Looks like in April. This she was released on the other one April 20th. Mm -hmm. Well, the first one. So I don't think she was out on bond on these. Um, so I just asked that you take no action on that, out on bonds, Your Honor. On all of them, was she released on April 30th? That I don't know. Hold on, I'm going to start at the bottom and work. <laughs> no, <'cause... laughs> yeah, the last one was April 30th as well. So she wasn't actually out on bond when this is alleged to have been committed. So I'll take no action on our out on bond cases. Um, what was the bond amount? I'm sorry. Five thousand dollars. No return. No contact. Okay. 
Thank you for helping me check those dates. Leonard Collins. Good morning, sir. You're here in 22 CF 4808, charged with violating sex offender reporting requirements. Give me one moment. Thank you. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Sir, a warrant was issued for your arrest, which means another judge has already found probable cause in this case. I don't even know how. What? I was. So the allegation is that you violated your sex offender reporting requirements? No. Hold on, I'll pull up the warrant. Can the state put the factual basis on the record? One moment, Your Honor. I'm, I'm pulling it up now, too, but it'll take me a minute. Sorry, technical difficulties. In the affidavit for the warrant, Mr. Collins, it says that you failed to report in person within the last 30 days to the sheriff's office as required. I went every month. So, um. so it sounds like you think you have some defenses to this, which you may have. I, I'm not telling you that you're guilty of this. What I'm telling you is probable cause has already been found because it's a warrant. So a judge signed this warrant already. But I appointed an attorney to represent you. So you want to talk to your attorney as soon as possible because if you have a defense, your attorney can raise that for you, okay? So... Hold on, I can't find them. Your Honor, um, he's currently unemployed. Um, can uh, I would ask for a two thousand dollar bond? How many? Two thousand. Um, he has some defenses. I just can't speak to. I see. What says the state? No objection, Your Honor. That is not typically what this court finds to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. However, all right, I'll set your bond at $2,000. Sir, you have to comply with your sex offender reporting requirements. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. You need to stay in touch with your attorney as soon as you get out. You understand that too? Yes, ma'am. And you must comply with all of your reporting requirements. Thank you. Good luck, sir. Mm -hmm. Come, Miss George. Kristen Knighton. Hmm? Christopher, what's your last name? Knighton. All right, I'm going to spell this and you tell me if that's the right person. Is it E N I A Y E D U N? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. I'm, I just want to make sure I'm talking to the right person. That's why I asked you that. Sir, you're here in, well, there's a parole violation, but that's a different case. 22 CF 5266 AO, charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon or ammunition, grand theft of a firearm, carrying a concealed firearm, and possession of MDMA. Does he qualify? All right, sir, you don't, do you have a job? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. do. My rehab through SSI. It's through SSI? Yeah, they help me do part time. Okay, so I see that I can hear that you have a stutter. Is that? I'm 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 sorry. I keep asking you questions. It's I'm not trying to make it hard on you. I just want to make sure I understand. I'm going to appoint the public defender because I'm not sure this is completely accurate. I don't think he's misleading the court, but I think this might be the same. So I'm just going to appoint them. 
Mr. George, I'm appointing you. You mm. might later be kicked off because I don't know if he actually qualifies. Mm -hmm. But at least right now, to help us get through this hearing, I want to make sure that he's properly represented. Were you able to review this affidavit, Mr. George? Yes. Just give us one moment, sir. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to say your name wrong. Oh, no, stay right there. I just want to make mm -hmm. sure she has a moment. While she's reading, I want to ask you another question that's not about the case. Do you ever sing? No. The only reason I ask is I have an uncle who had a severe stutter as a child, and he realized that when he sings, it he doesn't stutter as much. So I just wondered. Mm. Yes. Your Honor, I don't. Oh. I don't see any. I don't either, but. Challenges, Your Honor. I don't either. I, mean, I, I reviewed the defenses, affidavit. But I don't see any challenges. I think there's probable cause, but I wanted to give you that opportunity. Does the state wish to be heard on bond? No, Your Honor. Ms. George, do you have any arguments on bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, just given, I just ask that you take into consideration. Um, he is employed part time, but I, due to his, um, he has a disability. Um, I don't think he. I think because he has the SSI and they're helping him uh, with his employment, I do think um, he does qualify for the public defender's office, and in turn, um, he does not have a lot of money to pay for bond. Um, I will point to the fact that he has lived here for well over a year, even though his probation is not out of um, state. And it appears here, based on my sheet, that this will be the first charge he's picked up since being here. Because everything I see is out of state. I see no convictions here in Florida. So I just ask that you consider that. It's like everything he has was from the last conviction I see was 2019. I know he was on probation, but it looks like he was out of state. Yeah, that's what I see too. All right. Sure. Is he on probation here or is it just the parole? He's in a state. Okay. Probation. Okay, so he is on probation. Okay. So is there a hold for him or no? Um, they charged him. We just don't see interstate probation in court. But if he posts bond in this case, he he'll get out. He, he get won't out. get out. Okay. So you can't get right. this is a probation violation. Okay. I'll stay the bonds as listed in the affidavit. Sure. I'm not going to change them, but it doesn't matter since he won't get out right now. Mm -hmm. Sir, I want to make sure you understand, however, that when you do bond out, you can't possess or consume any controlled substance without a valid prescription, and you cannot possess a firearm or ammunition. Do you understand that? I see you nodding your head yes. I understand with the stutter, I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He's indicating he understands mm -hmm. me. All right. Good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. What happened to Mr. Doherty? Okay. I'll let you use the phone and I'll let the attorney know about the, the issue, okay? You just have to let me know these oh, okay. things. That's smart. And then we'll see. Please tell me your name. Linda Ford. Ms. Ford, you're here in 22 CF 5258, charged with possession of an unauthorized driver's license. Hold on one second. I feel like this is not right. Let me pull this up. and failure to identify oneself. I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. 
there is probable cause here. She has a hold for a probation violation out of Seminole. Um, yes, Aaron. It's no bond. All right. All right. I'll say the bond as listed in the affidavit: twenty five hundred on count one, a hundred on count two. Ma'am, you want to get in touch with your attorney right away because even if you post that bond, you're not going to be released because there's a hold for Seminole County. You understand? Okay. Okay, does he qualify? Oh, probably because he didn't show up, Your Honor. Uh... So this is interesting. Now that the Supreme Court is not requiring us to appoint the public defender for everyone. But he refused. He has a right to come to court. We're not going to force him. I, um, Your Honor, I would ask that you appoint us um, only because on his out on bond we are appointed. Oh. So. Um, What's he out on bond for? Possession of heroin, uh, loitering and prowling, and possession of drug paraphernalia. I see. Um, he was arrested, but he was released um, on a 33-day motion uh, April 18th. Um, so I'd ask that you take no action on the out on bond. There was a notice of non-filing before the 33rd day. Wow. All right, I'll appoint your office in this case as well. I find his refusal a willing waiver of his appearance today. <clears throat> there is probable cause. I reviewed the affidavit. I'll stay the bond at $2,000, no return, no victim or witness contact. What's the out on bond charge? Loitering and prowling, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of heroin. Um, if you are inclined to revoke, um, being that they, the state has not filed an information, was just released on a 33-day motion on um, April 18th, I would ask that you... Uh, consider revoking and doubling since an information has not been filed as opposed to holding him in no bond, Your Honor. Well, he was released on his own recognizance. Mm. Well, so if I double it. He's not going to be able to afford it. <laughs> you're right. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, no, you're fine. Um, I just noticed that. I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> so let's stay in the bond. I, but you're, I will take your argument. Mm -hmm. I will... I'll revoke that bond. I'll revoke his ROR. I'll set bond at a thousand five hundred and five hundred. No return in that case as well. No, he can't possess or consume any controlled substance and random drug screens. The out on bond, mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. No, that's okay. Not return, no no controlled substances without a valid prescription and random screens. Go ahead. Scott Ryan Harrison. Mr. Harrison, you're here in 22 CF 5269, charged with burglary of a structure and possession of burglary tools. Does he qualify? Yes. All right, sir, based on the affidavit you filled out, I will appoint the public defender's office to represent you. Did you wish to be heard, Ms. George? Burglary tools. Uh, 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 uh. I've seen burglary tools. Can you see the tools? It was a screwdriver. Stop. <laughs> no, you're. It, it was the screwdriver. Yeah, I, I, I do think there's probable there cause. It is. All right, I'll I'll stay the bond. Thirty five hundred on count one. Actually, I'll reduce count two to one hundred dollars. With special conditions, you can't return to that location or have contact with any victim or witness. Do you understand? No. All right. Stay in touch with your attorney, sir. Thank you. You okay? Freddie Howard. Uh, good morning, Mr. Howard. You have two cases today. 22 CF 5251, you're here charged with possession of cocaine. I am going to appoint an attorney to represent you in this case, sir. 
Give me one moment. There is probable cause. This is Your bond is $1,000. Sir, you can't have contact with any known drug dealers. You can't possess or consume any controlled substance without a valid prescription. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. And then in your other case, it's 21 CF 6781-BO. You're here because a capius was issued for your arrest for failing to appear for a plea hearing on charges of burglary of a structure and criminal mischief. The judge who issued that KPS authorized no bond. I'll appoint an attorney to represent you in that case as well. Good luck, sir. Yes, After this way. Tommy Mitchell. Good morning. Good afternoon. You're here in 22 CF 5252, charged with burglary of a structure and petty theft. Does he qualify? Mitchell. I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. Mr. Ward, did you wish to be heard? No, Your Honor. There is probable cause, sir. Your bond is $3,500 on count one, $500 on count two. With special conditions, you cannot return to the scene or have contact with any victim or witness in the case. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Good luck, sir. What happened with Kamal Kimball? He lives in the All right. If I give you the inmate number, 2201-0608. All right, 22 CF 5265. I'm going to appoint the public defender's office in this case. I find his refusal a willing waiver of his appearance today. Give me one moment. There is probable cause. I'll leave the bonds as stated in the affidavit. 1,000 on count one, 3,500 on count two, 500 on count three. He's not allowed to return to the scene, have contact with any victim or witness. At this time, I'm revoking his ROR on the 22MM2231. Uh, Ms. George, did you want to make an argument about that? No, I believe that a state did file. No. All right. No bond. What about Robert Pringle? Oh, he's next. Pringle. Oh, Padilla bonded. Pringle is next, and he refused. All right, I'm going to appoint the public defender's office. I will weigh the appearance. All right, hold on a minute. Was he actually here on? Uh, 22 CF 5228. Just the grand theft? Mm -hmm. All right, there is probable cause. I'll stay the bond at $2,500. No return, no contact with any victim or witness. Is he out on bond on anything? Not in this county. Yeah, he's yeah, he's still in custody. So. Okay, all right. That's all then. Hey, you tell me. Good afternoon. You're here in twenty two CF five two five seven eight oh charged with possession of a counterfeit driver's license. Does she qualify? Tommy. 
Thomas, Danielle Thomas. Right, I'll appoint an attorney to represent you. There is probable cause in this case. I'll say the bond at $2,500. And it looks like she has a VOP, mm -hmm. 22MM1192. Is that here? I was saying no. No, I mean, is it, we're not addressing it today? Oh, yes, we are. We are, okay. I don't see it, though. Is there bond on that? No, there's no bond. All right, so you have no bond on that VOP. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk to your attorney right away, okay? okay. Good luck, ma'am. Mr. Williams, you're here in 22 CF 5255 because a warrant was issued for your arrest charging you with fleeing or attempting to elude law enforcement officers with lights and sirens activated. Another judge has already found probable cause. I'll appoint an attorney to represent you in this case. Does either party wish to be heard on bond? Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Your Honor, I just point to the fact that um, his last conviction was a nonviolent offense in 2014. Um, and so I'd ask that you consider that and the fact that he has lived in the uh, Orlando area for well over a year um, when setting the bond amount in this case. Your bond is $10,000. You can't drive without a valid Florida license. Do you understand? I have a driver for the license. Okay, as long as you do, then you can drive. I'm not saying you don't. I just don't know if you do. No, I do. Okay, then you can drive. All right, good luck, sir. Stay in touch with your attorney. All right, 22 CF 5259. I'm going to appoint your office in this case, Ms. George. I will waive the uh, appearance, Your Honor. It's aggravated assault and robbery by sudden snatching. There is probable cause. Let me see what the bonds are listed. Does either side wish to be heard on bond? Nothing from the state. I just ask that you state the bonds listed. I don't, I see that he's unemployed and um, I don't see mental health history, so I don't know why he was mental health, but. Right, I don't see it either, but I read the affidavit and it's a little bit concerning. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll stay the bonds. 2,500 on count one, 100 on count two. Uh, no return, no contact with any victim or witness, no weapons, firearms, or ammunition. Good afternoon, ma'am. You're here in 22 CF 5260, charged with possession of methamphetamine and possession of drug paraphernalia. Does she qualify? Yes. All right, I'm going to appoint an attorney to represent you. Uh, Ms. George, did you wish to be heard? Um, no. I believe there's probable cause. There is, Your Honor. No. All right. There is probable cause, ma'am. Your bond will be $1,000 on count one, 100 on count two. But it wasn't on me, though. They said it was a purse nearby me, but it right. was. So possession is something that. It's something that's with you or has on not. you. It is not. At, or that's something that you own, right? It is not. That's not correct. What is it? So possession can be joint or constructive, and it can be actual. So something in your hands or something that's near you. That's what possession means under Florida law. So okay. the fact that it's near you might be enough. It might also not be enough. I've appointed an attorney to represent you. They can file a motion with the state of Florida. 
What I'm telling you today is there's probable cause. I'm not saying you're guilty. I'm saying there's probable cause. One of them is... Uh, no, ma'am, I'm not going to. I see that there are four prior failures to appear. The most recent one in your history was in 2019. So I'll say the bonds there. With special conditions, you cannot possess or consume any controlled substance without valid prescription or have contact with any known drug dealers. Do you understand? Yes. All right, stay in touch with your attorney, ma'am. And is this the one that has a private attorney? Yeah. All right, let me look. Do you, I don't have a sheet for him. I don't think there was a last one. I didn't see the last one. Oh, is that the face sheet too? Uh huh. Just in just a minute. We knew that. We knew that. <laughs> Please tell me your name. Uh, Lawrence Doherty. All right. Give me one moment. It looks like you might have an attorney representing you who's not here right now, so I want to see if we can find that. I don't have a link. Remember? I don't have a way to get to a link. Oh, there he is. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he's over here. No. Yes, you are. No, no, we started early. But we haven't, I, we just brought your client in and then we were trying to see if we could find you to see what time you were coming. We were not going to do it without you. Don't worry, counselor. Mm -hmm. But Can I, have one moment just to speak with him briefly I was just going to ask, do you need a couple minutes? Yeah, thank you. Okay, court will reset. We're early. It's, you're not late. We're early. <laughs> I know we have Soto, right. but no, let's take a break because in case he wants to also talk to the state, I want to make sure he has the opportunity to, oh, he doesn't want to. Okay, we're going to just, we're just going to take a, well, then you could go, though. Mm -hmm. We could do Soto if you want. All right, let's do Soto, and then we'll. Sorry, she doesn't, she can't go, but you could go, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Eugene. Misery loves company. We all stay. Right. <laughs> we're in this together. <laughs> all right. Ruben Soto. All right, Mr. Soto, we're going to go back to your case from this morning. You're here charged with battery domestic violence and two counts of resisting an officer without violence. When we were here this morning, your attorney asked the court to ROR you as to the last count. I'll grant that. And I'll release him on his own recognizance as to count three. Uh, your attorney gave, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was talking. Okay. Your attorney gave the court some things to review uh, over the break. Here's. Here's what concerns this court. Mr. Soto, you have a history of violating conditions of release placed on you by courts. I understand. You have that from Virginia. You have that here in Florida. There is currently an injunction signed by a circuit judge here in Orange County in the Ninth Circuit that ordered you not to have any contact with this victim, as well as not to be at the residence where you were arrested for battering the exact same victim. 
in 2021, you were convicted here in Florida of violating domestic violence injunctions. is clear to this court, there are no conditions of bond that I can impose on you with which you will comply. However, based on the information provided to the court by your attorney, I'm not convinced I can hold you at no bond. The court has many factors to consider when deciding a bond, one is the defendant's right to a bond. You're entitled to a bond in the state of Florida. However, the court is also charged with the responsibility of protecting the public as well as the victim in this case. Mr. Soto, you've repeatedly demonstrated that you will not obey court orders, and it is to the detriment of the victim in this case and the public safety here in the state of Florida. At this time, your bond on count one is a million dollars, Count two is $100. With special conditions, you can have no contact with the victim. Mr. Soto, I want you to look at me when I say this to you, because I want to be sure that you understand what I'm ordering. You can have no contact with the victim. You cannot speak to her. You cannot call her on the phone. You cannot send a text message. You cannot send a message through friends and family. You cannot be within a thousand feet of her residence. You cannot contact her using anything that I haven't listed. Do you understand that? I, I completely do. You can't possess a weapon of any kind, a firearm or ammunition. You cannot be within a thousand feet of the victim's place of employment. Are there any other conditions of state would request? No, Your Honor. Mr. Soto, stay in touch with your attorney. All right, at this time, court will take a brief recess while he speaks with his client. All right, good afternoon, counsel. We are back on the record. It's 12.52 p.m. on May 10th, 2022. If you want to call your case. Yes, Your Honor. Harold Thompson on behalf of Mr. Lawrence Doherty. Case number 2022-CF-00525. All right, go ahead. Your Honor, we're asking if the court would be inclined to set a bond in this case. My client has no previous history. Um, he's a longstanding resident of this jurisdiction. Uh, Your Honor, I uh, understand the, the severity of the charges, but he is close with the presumption of innocence in this situation, Your Honor. He has substantial ties to the community. He's not a flight risk. In fact, he actually contacted law enforcement and waited at the scene, cooperated and, and, and such. Um, being of that circumstance, Your Honor, um, I would ask if you would be inclined to set a bond, a reasonable bond amount in this case. Um, at this juncture, I don't believe the state can move forward with proof uh, of, of guilt being evident or the presumption great. Um, and we would just ask you to consider that under the circumstances, Your Honor. He's not a flight risk. He would agree to submit his passport, um, submit his firearms. He will even remain in the home um, if you'd be inclined to consider such. I spoke with the state. The state does have an objection to setting a bond in this case. Um, so we are at your discretion, Your Honor. All right. What bond are you requesting, counsel? Your Honor, we're requesting a, a $75,000 bond in this case. I have to tell you, I'm not inclined to do that. However, you can present any evidence and argument that you have, and I will consider everything. Well, Your Honor, um, one thing that I believe the court could consider in the facts of this case from the four corners of the probable cause affidavit, um, the decedent in this case was outside of my client's home at 1.30 in the morning, um, give or take, um, uninvited. Um, my client had definitely asked this uh, Mr. Payne to leave, which he did not. He, uh, he threatened my client. Uh, my client requested several times for him to leave. Um, understanding that it's a backstory to this case, uh, 
I don't want to pre-try the case essentially, but this is a, a textbook stand your ground case, I believe. I believe the evidence would show that um, my client cooperated fully with the investigation, never tried to avoid any um, conversation with law enforcement. Um, in fact, he even waived his right to speak um, with law enforcement. Uh, I believe it's conflicts in the evidence um, with biased witness, um, but Your Honor, essentially, Every person deserves their day in court. Um, again, he's called for the presumption of innocence. And even when the state is even um, able to prove that guilt is evident or the presumption great, it's still within the court's discretion to, to set a bond in the case. Um, we still have that discretion. You know, and that's pursuant to State v. Arthur, 390 Southern 2nd, 717, Florida Supreme Court case from 1980. Um, and again, Your Honor, my client has lived in this jurisdiction for 29 years. He has two children, a six-year-old and a 10-year-old. Um, he was at his home at the time. He wasn't out in a bar. He wasn't drunk. He wasn't um, um, doing any otherwise reckless conduct, but he was just trying to defend himself, his home, and his family. And we actually have two witnesses to, to the extent that actually corroborates my client's version of these, this case, his father and his son. And I believe that in time, the facts will reveal that this is a case of self-defense. What says the state? Your Honor, as defense has indicated, this is a serious crime. It actually is a capital offense. Uh, the death penalty, should it be proven, would be on the table. Um, self-defense is questionable, Your Honor, as the defendant is accused or alleged to have gone into his home, again, as defense said, the victim was outside in the parking lot. Defendant is alleged to have gone into his home, presumably to retrieve the weapon, come back outside, and then shot uh, the victim, which is why this is first degree and not second degree manslaughter or what have you. That is what makes it premeditated, was the time lapse to be in the confrontation, go into the home, come back out, and then shoot uh, the victim. In addition, Your Honor, there are witnesses, there's video, and supposedly the audio from the video, it does say something along the lines of, do not pull your gun out. Um, so, Your Honor, just based solely on the severity of this case, that presumably it was an un unarmed man when he was transported to the hospital. Um, a gun was not found on him, not a, nor a holster. So an unarmed man was shot outside. Um, and Mr. Thompson has been quite diligent. He has already filed a bond motion. At this time, I would ask defendant be held at no bond. I may briefly just say something, Your Honor, and I'll close. Um, in this case, uh, from my understanding, to the best of my knowledge and belief, I believe the deceited in this case was about 6'9", uh, well over 200 pounds. Um, my client's like 5'8", 160 at the most. Um, and, of course, it, it, like the state has suggested, it is a dispute with the facts in this case. However, this crime scene, before law enforcement arrived, a lady arrived and contaminated the crime scene. So, in fact, whether the firearm that my client believed the decedent had in his possession was not later found by detectives that arrived maybe but four, three, four hours later is an issue in the case, a material issue in the case. Um, but I believe um, we can make uh, rational inferences from the facts in this case that from someone to come to someone's home at that time of night, they're not coming to wish them a Merry Christmas or a Happy Birthday if you don't know this person and have no prior dealings with this individual. And again, this man was towering over my client and threatening on my client, even after my client asked him to leave. My client retreated into his home. His son was still outside, and his father, 60-year-old, his son at that time, nine, came outside, and he had to come back outside to get his family, make sure they're safe. So this is still, we would submit to the court, I understand we can agree or disagree, and just for argue window purposes, this is a case of self-defense, and the evidence we believe will show that if once we have our day in court. All right, well, <clears throat> I did review the affidavit for the warrant here. I also reviewed your bond motion, although I understand you're not actually asking for a bond hearing here today. 
right? You right. you intend to have that heard by the division judge. Right. At this time, I will be asking the court to be inclined to set a bond, but if you're inclined not to, I am fully prepared to request a hearing before the judge in the division 19. So I reviewed the affidavit, counselor, and I have to tell you that the court can find proof evident presumption great based solely on the affidavit. Mm -hmm. If neither party is going to present any other evidence today, if you ask me to make that finding or, or not, I can do that. I do believe the law is that you can still have a full Arthur hearing downtown and you have the right to a bond motion in front of that judge. But based solely on the affidavit, the, the information that's included in the affidavit, it looks to this court as though the only conflict in the evidence comes from your client. It looks like the witnesses are saying the same thing, which is what the state is alleging, which is that your client went back into the house, retrieved a firearm, came back outside, and then shot. So again, all I have is the affidavit. I have no other testimony to consider. It sounds like if you're able to call other witnesses or even your client, if your client wants to testify and other facts are presented, the court might make a different decision. But I understand if you don't want to do that today, I'm not asking you to do that. I, I'm just telling you that where I am right now, based on the affidavit, I'm not inclined to set bond. Can I have a moment to speak? Yes, you? absolutely. I don't know, my client would like to make a statement. All right, before we do that, Mr. Doherty, I want to make sure that you understand, and I'm, I'm confident in your attorney's abilities. He's an excellent attorney, but I want to make sure you understand. You are not required to testify today. You have the right to remain silent, and everything you say today is going to be under oath and recorded and can be used against you later. Do you understand that? I need you to answer out loud. Yes. Also, I want to make sure that you, what you, you understand what we're doing here today. A warrant was signed by another judge that's, the warrant says uh, that you committed first degree premeditated murder. Based on that charge alone, because the warrant is signed, you're not entitled to bond today. It does not mean a judge at a later date cannot or would not give you bond. Your attorney, as I said, is an excellent attorney. He's already filed, and as the state said, is very diligent. He's already filed a bond motion at a bond hearing your attorney can call many witnesses and present evidence. And that judge who hears that evidence might make a completely different decision. So I just want to make sure you understand that. You don't have to make a statement today. I'm not requiring or asking you to. That's between you and your attorney. You understand that? Understanding all of that, do you still wish to make a statement? At this time, Your Honor, I don't believe my client would like to make a statement. We would reserve for a bond hearing if the court would be inclined not to afford us bond here today. All right. I am not inclined to do that today. I will hold you at no bond at this time. But let me also tell you, Mr. Doherty, you're, the judge who's assigned to this case is Judge LeBlanc. He's an excellent jurist from whom I've learned a lot. And 
as we've just said, your attorney is very good. I have no doubt your attorney will get in front of Judge LeBlanc as soon as humanly possible. So I just want to make sure you understand you're not you're not giving up your right to a bond hearing. You'll have one, just not today. You understand? All right. However, even while in custody, I'm ordering, sir, that you are not allowed to have contact with the victim's family members. Do you understand that? I don't associate myself with them. Okay, that's easy then. So that's not a problem. Are there any other conditions the state would request since there's no bond? Um, I would also, uh, no, you know what, I'm sure the firearm has been taken in already as evidence, so right. no, nothing and else. He's not being released, so he can't do anything with it anyway. Okay. All right. Thank good you. luck, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so counselor. Much, you all have a good day. Yes, sir. Is there anything else? I'm sorry, did you put your appearance on record? Because we went off record. <laughs> Brenda Eugene on behalf of the state attorney's office. All right. Anything else, Ms. Eugene? Uh, nothing from the state. All right. Court is adjourned. Bond Court is a free service, but it takes several hours of my time every day. Less than 10% of Bond Court viewers hit the like button, and less than 1% leave a comment. If you want Bond Court to continue to be available on YouTube for free then please hit the like button and leave a comment on all of my videos.